Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Welcome to all of you joining around the world uh, for this Remembering Better program. And we are so excited to have you today for one of the biggest webinars that Celebrate Mercy does every year uh, in this blessed month of Ramadan. And um, it is actually the 17th, it is the 17th night of Ramadan for many of you, or it could be your 17th day of Ramadan, or maybe you're watching a recording this week, uh, in this week that we are commemorating this momentous occasion, this pivotal event in our history, the Battle of Badr. Uh, the Battle of Badr uh, is an amazing story with so many lessons for us, especially now as our ummah is going through so many challenges and difficulties where there are so many lessons we can we can uh, take and learn from because of this Im amazing event in our history. And we want to invite you, inshallah, to invite your friends uh, to join this program. Let me show you all a flyer here, uh, right here. This flyer uh, gives you a link that says celebratemercy.org slash live. Celebratemercy.org slash live. At this link, your friends will be able to join us directly on YouTube right now. So tonight, for many of you, is the 17th night of Ramadan. This is the night of Badr. Uh, and one thing that I'm going to say throughout the night tonight is, where would we be today? If Badr went the other way, where would we be today if the battle of Badr went the other way? That's something we have to ask ourselves. Why is this historic event so historic? Why is it so pivotal? Why is, is it why is it so important in our history, in our faith, in our spirituality? Why is the battle of Badr so important? What lessons can we learn for it from it? How can it help? purify our hearts, purify our intentions, purify our actions, purify our families and our communities. There is so much we can learn from this battle of Badr uh, and this historic occasion. So take a moment and invite your friends. The Prophet wasallam said that whoever encourages someone to do a good deed is like the one who performed the good deed. So take a moment and text your friends, invite your friends. We've posted this on socials as well. Instagram, Instagram story, invite them to go to celebratemercy.org slash live and join us today, right now for this program, inshallah. Uh, and if your friends benefit tonight, they hear something that may transform their lives, uh, you know, lead to uh, some type of a spiritual opening, then you will get those blessings as well on this blessed day in this blessed month commemorating this blessed event in our history, uh, inshallah. We now have 140 devices connected right now. Uh, many of you are watching as families uh, and groups, uh, or maybe you know a husband and wife watching together. Maybe you're watching alone, but we have about 150 devices connected right now. I think that number is going to grow as you all encourage friends and family to tune in, inshallah. For this program. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to ask all of you who are tuning in where you are tuning in from. Where are you joining us from? What is your city, your state? Are you watching by yourself? Are you watching with family? Let us know. We can share some of the responses really quick. We'll share your responses for the next 30 seconds to let us know where you are tuning in from around the world, inshallah. Let us know in the chat. Can we share some of those uh, responses, inshallah. Uh, Antigua and Aruba. Okay. Mashallah. Amazing. Where else Where else are you all joining from? Austin, Texas, Michigan, Columbia, Missouri. Mashallah. Phoenix, Arizona, sunny California, Portland, Oregon, Philippines, Baltimore, Maryland, Dallas, Texas, Ontario, Canada, Richmond, Texas, Allentown, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania again, Portland, Oregon, Iowa, Denmark, okay, New York, 
Connecticut and alone. Gaza? Someone really joining us from Gaza? Amazing if that's the case. Scottsdale, Arizona. Philly. California. Houston, Texas. Southern California. Australia. Michigan. California. Toronto. San Diego. Montreal. Okay. Wow. New Jersey. Okay. Someone's saying, I'm watching alone. It's my first Ramadan and I am the first revert in my family. MashaAllah. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless you. Liverpool in the UK. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Look at all these people joining. MashaAllah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Multiple countries, multiple continents. Um, and continue to invite your friends to tune in. We're now close to two. 100 devices connected as we get started in this program. Tonight is a blessed night. It's a blessed day, 17th day of Ramadan, uh, when amazing things happened that we will commemorate and celebrate and talk about in this webinar, inshallah. All right. So this is being brought to you by Celebrate Mercy. We teach about the life and the character of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through our programs and through our campaigns. Uh, we want to encourage you to hit that like button and subscribe on YouTube. Most of you are watching on YouTube right now. If we can get a lot of people liking and commenting and subscribing, then the algorithm can pick this up and encourage much, many more people to, to join in. Maybe the numbers will quadruple or triple or double because we're getting a lot of likes and subscribes and comments as you're watching, inshallah. That is another way to share this video is by simply clicking that like button, inshallah. It helps celebrate mercy out tremendously. We also want to tell you that we are going to have a raffle at the end of the program today where you could win some really big prizes. I'll share a little bit more about what those prizes are later in the program, but all you have to do is simply post about this program and use this hashtag, CM Bedr for Celebrate Mercy. CM Bedr. Make sure you tag us and you can post a picture of your family watching the webinar. Here are some examples from last year. You can see here someone who is joining uh, at 3 a.m. in Pakistan posted a picture. Make sure you can show a picture of the webinar or your family watching the webinar or your cat watching the webinar uh, and post. Use the hashtag. Tag Celebrate Mercy. Maybe you want to uh, quote one of the teachers, something beautiful that one of the teachers shared. Here are some examples from last year. So you can post on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or also known as X. Or if you don't have it, social media, which that would be great if you don't, uh, you can email us your photo at photo at celebratemercy.com. You can email us, and that will count towards the raffle. Also, anyone who donates tonight to celebrate mercy to our launch good page your name will also be entered into the raffle as well so you could actually get two raffle tickets you could get a, a raffle ticket by posting and by donating your your name could be in there twice inshallah uh in that raffle so post on facebook twitter instagram inshallah, or email us your photo of you guys watching the webinar or you can quote one of the teachers but make sure you use the hashtag and tag celebrate mercy and make sure it's a public post so we can see it inshallah or email us your photo inshallah we do have some families who have sponsored today's webinar we're going to mention them a little bit later in the program we're grateful to today's webinar sponsors as well but we're going to go ahead and get started with the program right away uh inshallah with an initial recitation of the quran by our dear brother Qari Sinan Hafiz. I'm going to introduce him and then we will hear from him as well. MashaAllah, we now have 234 devices connected now. So continue sharing the webinar, inshallah. We have a really good turnout. And at the end of the program today, Qari Sinan will be joining us again for the recitation of the names of all of the heroes from the Battle of Badr all of the heroes from the Battle of Badr. That will be recited. We will be making dua for them. That is a really special and blessed part of this program where we remember them by name in a beautiful, melodious way where we recite their names and we pray for them all, inshallah. So let me introduce Qari Sinan Hafiz. 
Sinan Hafez was born and raised in the United Arab Emirates. He has loved the Quran since he was four years old. He has a master's in business administration, and he enjoys reciting the Quran and spreading its recitation, praying for hearts to soften by the words of Allah. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and bring Qari Sinan Hafiz to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sidi Tariq. It's Great. always a pleasure to be here with you, especially yes. in these in these nights. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. What a beautiful night uh, where we remember the heroes of Badr, inshallah. And we're so excited to have you recite the Quranic verses, but also the names of those heroes later, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll start with the recitation bi idhnillah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Qad kana lakum ayatun fi fi'atayn iltaqata. Fi'atun tuqatilu fi sabili allahi wa ukhra kafiratun yarawnahum mithlayhim ra'ya al-ayn Wallahu yu'aydu binasrihi man yasha إن في ذلك لعبرة لأولي الأبصار ولقد نصركم الله ببدر وأنتم أذلة فاتقوا الله لعلكم تشكرون إذ تقولوا للمؤمنين ألن يكفيكم أن يمدكم ربكم بثلاثة آلاف من الملائكة منزلين بلى إن تصبروا وتتقوا ويأتوكم من فورهم هذا يمددكم يمددكم ربكم بخمسة آلاف من الملائكة مسومين وما جعله الله إلا بشرى لكم وما جعله الله إلا بشرى لكم ولتطمئن قلوبكم به وما النصر إلا من عند الله العزيز الحكيم يجادلونك في الحق بعد ما تبين كأنما يساقون إلى الموت كأنما يساقون إلى الموت وهم ينظرون وإذ يعدكم الله إحدى الطائفتين أنها لكم وتودون أن غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم وتودون أن غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم ويريد الله أن يحق الحق ويريد الله أن يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين ويقطع دابر الكافرين ليحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ويبطل الباطل ولو كره المجرمون إذ تستغيثون ربكم فاستجاب لكم 
فاستجاب لكم أني ممدكم بألف من الملائكة مردفين وما جعله الله إلا بشرى ولتطمئن قلوبكم به وما جعله الله إلا بشرى ولتطمئن به قلوبكم وما النصر إلا من عند الله إن الله عزيز حكيم إذ يغشيكم النعاس أمنة منه وينزل لكم وينزل عليكم من السماء ماء ليطهركم به ليطهركم به ويذهب عنكم رجز الشيطان وليربط على قلوبكم ويثبت به الأقدام آمنت بالله صدق الله العظيم Jazakum Allah khair to our brother Qari Sinan Hafiz for the beautiful recitation as always. Uh, mashallah, we are uh, we are going to go ahead and get started with the beginning uh, teachers for tonight's program. Uh, just a reminder to, to invite your friends to tune in. We now have over 300 uh, devices connected and you can ask your friends to join us on Celebrate Mercy's YouTube channel where we are streaming this live at Celebrate, or you can just tell them to go to celebratemercy.org slash live, inshallah, and tune in right now. I also want to mention one of our family sponsors, uh, and her name is Zainab Nisa, Zainab Nisa, sorry, Zainab Nisa Begum. Uh, and she said, I would like to make dua for my parents, grandparents on both sides, as well as immediate and extended families and community members who have raised us on the Quran and Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for their sacrifice and keep us steadfast on Sirat al Mustaqim. Ameen. Everyone say Ameen to this beautiful dua. Uh, we have other sponsors we'll mention a little bit later in the program, inshallah. But uh, we do have sponsorship opportunities uh, for some of our other webinars. And you can email us or go to this site that you see here on this flyer celebratemercy.org slash sponsor. It's a beautiful sadaqa jariya opportunity for your family. It can be an anonymous sponsorship. You can sponsor on behalf of, you know, those who are suffering in the ummah, like our brothers and sisters in Gaza, but it's a beautiful sadaqa jariya opportunity. Uh, and we will show that dua twice during the webinar that you sponsor. And it's a great way to help Celebrate Mercy cover the costs of some of these webinars as well, inshallah. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce our first teacher of the evening, and that is Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, who will be starting us off with the first talk, inshallah, of this program tonight. Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud studied theology, hadith, legal theory, jurisprudence, ethics, Quran recitation, and Arabic with scholars in Morocco, Mauritania, and Egypt. He's taught for more than a decade at Yale, Princeton, and Harvard. Then he left academia to, be, to institute Lanterna is an educational initiative that intends to establish learning collectives to carry forward the legacies of our greatest luminaries. He continues to read with scholars and students in the United States and abroad. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and bring Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud to the stage. Ramadan Mubarak to you all, to you and your families, and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds you blessed in these middle 10 nights of Ramadan, uh, the nights of uh, forgiveness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us as we forgive 
those whom uh, we have uh, who who whom have who have wronged us, and uh, seek the forgiveness of those whom we have wronged. Amin ya alamin. I'm honored to be among you uh, this evening uh, for uh, the commemoration of the uh, sacrifice of those companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, who fought at uh, Badr, and those 14 who uh, gave their lives so that uh, sinners like myself can say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. And so we gather together to commemorate them um, and uh, to uh, understand uh, the um, their sacrifice and how that relates uh, to us in our lives uh, so that we may be able to make sen- sense of the uh, trials and the afflictions uh, that we are also observing with the Ummah as well. And so <clears throat> before I start, I would like to have a brief moment of silence and prayer uh, for the uh, for those of our uh, brothers and sisters who are facing uh, incredibly difficult uh, circumstances in Gaza, in Sudan, in Myanmar, in Kashmir, uh, and, uh, and in other parts of the Ummah uh, that are bleeding tonight, that are starving tonight. A prayer for them, inshallah. To understand uh, what happened at Badr and how the Prophet sent uh, soldiers out uh, to go and fight at Badr, um, one may ask uh, why the why did the Prophet send them out? Um, and um, and what led to Badr, right? <clears throat> we have to be able to contextualize the Battle of Badr by looking first at the 15 years preceding it, 13 of which were in Mecca and the two that were in uh, Medina because Badr was fought in the second year after the Hijrah. Of course, in Mecca, the Prophet Wasallam had lived a life in which uh, he had acquired, attained the reputation of being the most truthful of all uh, his contemporaries. Um, and they believed him, they loved him. He didn't have an enemy to his name until he called them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to abandon uh, the idols that they had been worshipping. Uh, and this is what brought the first confrontations against him uh, from his family members and those who were closest to him, his tribesmen, and then from there on. Uh, but the first three years of his calling uh, happened in private doors uh, in the evening and under the thick cover of the night. Um, and the early community found itself under persecution. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ was ridiculed. Uh, he was defamed. Uh, people were uh, accusing him of sorcery and of, uh, of lying um, <clears throat> and of discord between uh, families and uh, between and among clans and tribes, and so the they met him with these insults. But more than that, they persecuted him and his followers, and th- and that persecution even led to the murder uh, and martyrdom of his closest companions, um, and uh, and that escalated then to the complete boycott of the early community for three years. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu had to witness the starvation of babies and the um, and the weeping of uh, of, of children and uh, and their mothers who could not uh, provide for them for three years and so this was uh, a, a tumultuous time in the early history and the, in the formative period of this community uh, and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the early uh, meccans the early companions in mecca uh, had uh, had not the means or with or the wherewithal uh, to respond militarily, uh, to respond to the confiscation of their goods, to respond to the uh, banishment from their homes, to respond to uh, the uh, utter persecution and the murder of their peoples, and to respond to the starvation uh, of their uh, of their children, um, and then uh, at the uh, toward the end of this uh, this boycott. 
the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lost uh, his uncle and he lost his uh, beloved wife Khadija uh, Al-Kubra uh, and so this led to the year of sorrow for the Prophet Sallallahu in which he was so desperate that he traveled 90 kilometers to Ta'if in order to seek the support of the people there so that he may be able to return to Mecca just to uh, call the people to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> and to complete his mission now they stoned him from their city and they banished him and the prophet sallallahu uh, was uh, had had uh, earlier sent about a hundred of his companions to abyssinia right that's how desperate they were for protection that they had to go to abyssinia uh, to seek the protection of a foreign king uh, and so the this persecution was met with um, patience, it was met with perseverance and with um, the, the, uh, the awaital of or the awaiting of the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to migrate for the Prophet sallallahu always knew from the very day that Waraka ibn Nawfal, the cousin of Khadija uh, told him that he would be banished from his city he knew that the day would come uh, but he didn't know when exactly that the day would come with that he would have to migrate from uh, Mecca. But that permission for migration came, and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had already sent a good number of his companions, about 70 of his companions before him, to migrate uh, to Medina. This is after the second pledge of Aqaba. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself received the permission. He goes to Abu Bakr anhu and the uh, migration is nigh <clears throat> and they migrate <clears throat> 250 miles north uh, to medina excuse me one second you got me at iftar time uh and so i'm i'm having to i had to drink a little bit um so the prophet Sallallahu migrated to medina 250 miles north of mecca and upon arriving in Medina, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the early companions face um, great difficulty in, their, in the first period there. Many of them caught malaria. Uh, in fact, Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Bilal have poetry that they recite about their homesickness for Mecca. It's a very difficult period in their lives. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the very first thing that he does before building a masjid is he pairs... Uh, Muhajir with Ansari he pairs them together and so he built <clears throat> before building this masjid uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 the masjid Nabawi before building uh, his own quarters where, in which he would live he built men and women from the ground up and he, pair, and he built community and he built bonds of love and loyalty uh, between their hearts and so he paired them up and it took about seven months for the masjid to, 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 be, to be brought to completion, the construction of the masjid to be brought to completion, about seven months. During those seven months, the bonds of brotherhood uh, were, um, <clears throat> were uh, established. And the Prophet ﷺ was building community. And he had uh, entered into treaties with the neighboring Jewish tribes, Banu Qaynuqa, Banu Nadir, Banu Qurayla. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in this time, um, or about a year and a half into it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the verse uh, that, that uh, prescribes fasting uh, for the early community. So this is their very first Ramadan. It's the first Ramadan of this community that they're, that they're, um, that they're engaged in the fasting. And on the 17th day, on the 17th day is when the Battle of Badr occurs. Right, but before that, the year and a half before that, there were skirmishes, uh, if you will, between the Meccans and the the Muslims in Medina. Skirmishes. The Meccans would send uh, envoys. They would send um, uh, troops to uh, to sort of uh, test the waters with the Muslims and in, intimidate them, and 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 they would confront one another. But there was no bloodshed in these skirmishes. 
some of them, the skirmish, some of these skirmishes, about eight of them, uh, the Prophet himself uh, is a participant. But uh, th these are intimidation tactics that all lead us to Badr. And one of the very important points of this early history is that the Meccans wrote a letter to uh, Ibn Ubay in Medina saying that you have now given refuge and asylum to our friend, our sahib, right? And unless you uh, fight him or banish him, we will do the job. Right, and so this threat came that uh, from inside, right? That the that the um, the the hypocrites began to uh, mobilize against the Prophet And when the Prophet confronted them about this letter, he said to them, "That you have uh, bitten off, uh, what's the phrase? <clears throat> more than you can chew. You have bitten off more than you can chew, and you are not prepared for this." In other words, you are not prepared for the reaction to what you are plotting to do. And so the, the, uh, this intimidation and this threat, right, all uh, pre, pre, preceded uh, the Battle of Badr. And then after the Battle of Badr was won, right, after the Muslims won that battle, the Quraysh sent a similar letter to the Jews, right, the Jewish tribes in Medina seeking the same thing, that they fight the Prophet or that they banish him and return him to them. And so this is sort of the prelude to that battle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us uh, through the teachings of those uh, teachers on the panel. And may he reward you all for your fasting and your prayers. Um, and um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless this uh, endeavor by Celebrate Mercy. Uh, do support this organization that has gathered us so often uh, to glorify our Lord and to invoke the blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu and to learn about his seerah, uh, those lessons that would help us, inshallah, individually and communally. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you to our dear brother, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, for the beautiful lesson, the beautiful context, the important context for uh, why this battle even took place in the first place. What preceded that battle? Uh, what is the context before that battle even took place? Uh, and we will be going to our next teacher in just a moment. Uh, that is Sheikh Yahya Rodas. Uh, from Al Maqasid, who will be joining us shortly, uh, inshallah, for the next portion of the program. I can see now that we have almost 400 devices connected in this webinar right now. Uh, we want to encourage you all to uh, continue sharing. We have some goals for today during this webinar, one of which is that we want 313 of you to share the khair, inshallah. So, uh, we have almost 400 devices connected now, so we need most of you to encourage friends and family to tune in right now. Why 313? Well, that is uh, what many scholars believe and have said that is the number of heroes who fought in the Battle of Badr, 313. So we're looking for 313 of you to share the khair by inviting friends to tune in to this program tonight inshallah. We also talked about how you can share about the program by uh, using the hashtag, which is CM Badr, inshallah. If you want to post on social media about this program, inshallah, you can use that hashtag. Uh, maybe you can quote one of the teachers or you can send in a picture of your family tuning into the webinar, like this picture here from last year. We have a lot of examples we can show you, but anyone who shares uh, and tag Celebrate Mercy uses the hashtag, or you can email us the photo. We will enter your name in a raffle at the end of the program where you could win some prizes that are worth hundreds of dollars, inshallah. Some really beautiful gifts, which we'll talk about later in the program, uh, inshallah. So you can you can uh, potentially win those prizes by posting about the program or emailing us one of those photos, inshallah. Um, so we are actually going to go to our next teacher, and that is, as I mentioned, Sheikh Yahya Rodas. Uh, inshallah, let me go ahead and introduce him to you all, and then we'll bring him to the stage, inshallah.
Sheikh Yahya Rodas is founding director of Al Maqasid, an Islamic seminary whose vision is to facilitate the realization of Iman, Islam, and Ihsan through immersion in the prophetic inheritance. The concept of Al Maqasid emerged from his own journey, which began at the traditional school of Murabat al Hajj in the desert of Mauritania shortly after his conversion. That led him to the acclaimed school Dar al Mustafa in Tarim, where he received instruction from the renowned scholar Habib Omar. And after graduating from Dar al Mustafa and returning to the US, he studied in a number of academic institutions, culminating in a PhD in theology and religious studies from the University of Cambridge in England. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and bring Sheikh Yahya to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Afladu as-salaa wa tamu taslim. Ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in. Subhanaka la ilmanana illa ma'allamtana inna kanta al-alim al-hakim. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم رمضان مبارك to all of you and to echo the same sentiments of our dear brother Sidi Hisham this is a blessed opportunity for us to come together time and time again may Allah ta'ala reward, celebrate mercy and their entire team and to raise them to the highest degrees and to bless them be able to continue to do this work and may its effects reach far and wide across the earth Ya Arham ar I've been tasked with the part of painting the picture and explaining the details of coming up to the actual Battle of Badr itself, in particular focusing on the caravan raids. And I want to do so in the following way. Uh, I want to quote a hadith of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is narrated by Imam Ahmed. It's a very beautiful narration. It tends to be in some of the collections of Shama'il. And in this narration, it's narrated by none other than Sayyidina Hudayfa ibn al Yaman, who was the Sahab Sayyid Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we know they had a special connection to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so when we understand the context of this hadith, it's really amazing how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke to him so directly. And he says, Bainama and Amshi fi tariq al Medina. On one occasion, when I was walking on one of the streets of Medina, I all of a sudden saw the Prophet walking, so I encountered the Prophet. And then I heard him say, And he goes on to mention a number of his names. So you can just imagine, here's Hudayfa walking in one of the streets of Medina. And he encounters Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says this, I am Muhammad. I am Ahmed. I am the Prophet of mercy. I am the Prophet of repentance. I am Al-Hashir. I am the gatherer. I am Al-Muqaffi, the one who's followed. One Al-Malahim. And I am the Prophet of battles. So you normally might not think this would be the first thing someone says to you. But clearly our Prophet Sallallahu understood who Sayyidina Hudayfa was. And thus he started to speak to him in a way, indicating and in knowing that the more that Sayyidina Hudayfa, and by extension, the various other companions, as well as the Ummah, even by further extension, come to know who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is, the more that they will have an ability to learn their deen and to put it into practice in a way that is pleasing to Allah Ta'ala. So this is very important because the Prophet knew Sallallahu Alaihi that Hudayfa could understand this language. He only spoke to people in a way that they could understand. Now, if we look at the names that are mentioned here, he starts by the two most famous names. He's Muhammad and he's Ahmed Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know those names. He's known by Ahmed in the heavens and Muhammad here on earth. But then he goes on to say, Anan Nabiya Rahmah. I am the prophet of mercy. And we know that as well. And then he says, I am the prophet of repentance. More people have repented on the hands of the Prophet and his inheritors throughout the centuries than any other prophet in human history or any other person in human history. And he's the Hashra. He is the one that 
the creation is gathered at his feet on Yom al -Qiyamah. And he is the one who has followed the Muqaffi. But then he ends this with by saying, Wana Nabi al Malahim. I am the prophet of battles. Now the prophet saying this, we should understand that he's indicating some reality that he's been given. And this can only be seen in a positive sense. So the reason he is the Nabi and Malahim, the prophet of battles, is because no one sacrificed like he did Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa And I'm mentioning this hadith, but I think it's very important to approach this unapologetically is that no one sacrificed, no one struggled, no one fought defensive and even offensive wars like our Prophet did Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we need to challenge ourselves to be able to think beyond the narrow lens of modernity. And I'm really hoping, and I think this absolutely needs to be said, the events that are transpiring right now in Palestine should be a wake-up call for Muslims, thinking that they're going to have some concept of human rights or justice that is outside the context of our own deen. And as one of my teachers stated, is that what we see happening right now, now the makeup is being removed from what was put out there as human rights. Now we're starting to see what happens when you remove the makeup and the ugliness that is behind it. And so this is a wake-up call. And this is hopefully going to speak to the heart of every believer that still has a sense, any sense, of an inferiority complex. Is that our Prophet ﷺ is the Prophet of God. He is the Prophet of Allah, Jalla Jalalu. And he is the Prophet of truth. And everything that he brought was truth. And everything he did was what the Lord of the heavens and the earth wanted him to do. So that by way of introduction, and now the segue into the specific about the caravans. There's a book that I encourage everybody to consider the argument of. I have it here right before me. It's written by Joel Hayward, Dr. Joel Hayward. And it's called The Warrior Prophet. It's about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and war. And he has some very important points that he makes here. And one of the things that he does in section one, which is titled Rating as a Norm, the best explanation for the initiation of warfare. He goes through some of the popular opinions here. And from those that are uh, trying to essentially present the Prophet as a pacifist, and that those who are trying to present some form of rationale in terms of what the Prophet did, he even gets in the tail end of something that the classical jurists have said in relation to this, and just pointing very briefly to some of the Orientalists who, of course, are always going to try to relegate something to that of a sociological nature and a desire for power, something like this. But then he goes into detail, which what he feels is the best explanation for this. So he actually has a list of the raids and campaigns in the appendix, and he mentions eight that took place before the actual battle of Badr. And these are Sif al-Bahr, Rabigh al-Kharrar, al-Abwa, Bawalt, Safawan, and then Dhul Ushayra, and then Nakhla. And that he lists the leader of each one of those, the number of participants, and the result. But one of the very important things that he does is he hits it head on in an unapologetic manner which is how I really believe that we should approach this. And I'm going to spend my remaining two minutes quoting him. So this is a quote from his book. And he says, explaining why, and I'm going to say Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why Sayyidina Muhammad chose traditional Bedouin style hunt and pounce raiding as his main form of warfare is straightforward. He did so precisely because that was the recognized and accepted and in many ways expected way of achieving the aforementioned outcomes in stateless tribal Arabia, where he wanted his emergent polity to be esteemed, prosperous, and powerful, obviously for the sake of Allah. How else could he attract others to it if it was not? He also wanted his men to become and to be seen as courageous, tenacious, resourceful, and resilient. They would need to be so if they're going to take the new religious ideas to people everywhere. 
Then he goes on to say, there was of course more to it than merely raiding and taking booty in order to gain their constructive social consequences. Muhammad needed to create a protective buffer around his community in Medina, which necessitated demonstrating to the tribes and clans around Medina, and doubtless to the non-Muslim groups within it, that he and his community were a force to be reckoned with. He also looked ahead strategically to how best to bring the southern tribes, those which were allied to the Quraysh, or at least treated them different, deferentially or permissively, into his ever-growing polity. And then he goes on to say, 7th century intertribal raiding, including that of the Prophet Muhammad's license, should be seen in this way. It was then unmistakably, unmistakably, part of Arabia's moral landscape with personal and communal honor and esteem attached to its successful conduct, even though that landscape has changed so much that we no longer recognize it. Today's readers need to understand the raids as they were then understood. Raiding for booty was neither banditry nor theft. The legitimate authority, the tribal leaders, not only allowed it, but repeatedly initiated. Just as in today's world, the legitimate authority's initiation of an action created a moral legitimacy, a moral legitimacy different to an action is initiated by all other individuals. Thus, one cannot attribute the slightest immorality to the Islamic raids or to consider them theft. Within the raids, moral framework, of course, was a firm and non-negotiable position that made an individuals taking a part of the boot without authority a clear case of theft, which might have been have the severest consequences for the thief. And then and finally, he, finally, he says, Muslims should see that the raid as part of a contextual, time-bound set of circumstances that no longer exist, socially sanctioned by customary law that has long been superseded, initiated by a type of leadership that has given way to government and undertaken according to values that have changed considerably. The Prophet Muhammad undertook them, it is true, and gained the same esteem and benefits as others who successfully did so in his era. And for Muslims, that might seem a problem given the way they want to follow his example. Yet they could only follow it anyway if there was a return to the very same contextual time-bound set of circumstances. In that regard, this is the same as the possibility of Muslims today following the Quranic or prophetic direction on how Muslims should deal with polytheists performing pagan rituals at the Kaaba. The situation no longer exists, so therefore that direction is no longer an actual part of a sunnah that 1.8 billion Muslims follow today can follow. So this is some food for thought, and this gives us context to these various raids that our Prophet did, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa and that when we understand this, is that we understand is that he was acting in a way that was pleasing to Allah and according to the command of Allah. And what we need to do is, in every subsequent generation, and we do this through being in touch with the inheritors of our Prophet ﷺ, to understand the sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ in its totality, and then to put it into practice in, so far, in, in the very best way within the limits of what we can do, given our own unique circumstances. And essentially, our time now is a time of coming to learn about the Prophet Sallallahu way and putting that way into practice in hopes that we can draw near to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq in this blessed month of Ramadan, open up the doors for us to understand and for us to practice in a way that is pleasing to Him. Ya Arham Rahimeen, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad wa Ala Ali wa Sahbihi wa Sallam, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Yahya, for the really beautiful talk, mashallah, um, giving us context of, uh, in terms of um, just war and the response to, you know, the confiscation of property and the oppression of uh, those in Mecca who were enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu and the community of the Muslims and giving us context of those attacks on the caravans as well. Uh, that is very, very important context that leads up to the Battle of Badr, inshallah, and a specific caravan that our next teacher, uh, Sheikh Maryam Amir, will be talking about, the caravan of Abu Sufyan and the, uh, the, the days leading up to the Battle of Badr in that uh, more specific context. But that was a really beautiful talk by Sheikh Yahya. We're very grateful for him joining us, and we do have now... MashaAllah, over around 440 devices connected now. Uh, you all are continuing to share and invite your friends, which is great, uh, to this webinar. 
invite them to our YouTube channel, inshallah. We've already talked about, you know, encouraging you all to like, to press that like button, subscribe as well. Uh, we had 313 heroes at Badr, those who are willing to sacrifice their own lives uh, for this ummah, for the Prophet وسلم, for this ummah to survive, for this deen to reach us today, uh, inshallah. And we're asking uh, all of you, uh, we have some requests from you all to invite your friends, inshallah. We hope 313 of you will invite your friends to tune in or maybe view the recording uh, and to talk about this webinar, share it on your social media. We hope you can subscribe to our channel as well so you can stay connected to these programs and these commemorations and these celebrations of the legacy of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We also hope that you'll consider supporting Celebrate Mercy uh, in our Ramadan fundraiser. It is an annual fundraiser that we have, our biggest fundraiser of the year. And the, the money that we raise in Ramadan helps us to sustain our programs around the year. We also have a beautiful announcement to share that we do have a generous donor who said that if we can raise $17,000 today, uh, because today is the 17th of Ramadan, if we can raise $17,000, that this donor will match it with another 17,000, inshallah. So, and we are kind of struggling with our fundraising campaign right now. We're at only 21% of our goal, but we are more than halfway through Ramadan. So we could use a big boost. We could use a miraculous uh, spike in donations tonight, inshallah. So with the matching grant that we have and with your support, inshallah, we hope that we can unlock that $17,000 match. So we'll share this slide throughout the webinar to let you know where are we in terms of reaching that goal of 17,000, inshallah. And you can learn all about our fundraiser at launchgood.com slash CM. Uh, on that page, the LaunchGood page, you can see what we're raising money for. Part of it is going towards an endowment fund. Part of it is called going towards the Palestine Project. Part of it is actually Zakat Eligible, our scholarship fund, that helps individuals who are Zakat eligible to receive books, including incarcerated Muslims, to attend conferences, to attend trips. Uh, those who are Zakat eligible who can't afford those books and those educational opportunities, we do have a Zakat eligible part of what we're raising money for, inshallah. One more thing is that if you look on our Launch Good page, we have added now a giving level called uh, where you can give exactly $313. Uh, and we're asking you all to consider giving this amount or higher. Uh, inshallah, whatever you give, make an intention that Allah also grants that reward and those blessings of your sadaqah to the heroes of Badr. When you make that donation, ask Allah, please give uh, this reward and these blessings also to the heroes of Badr, inshallah. So we have a special category there. Uh, and anyone who donates at that level, inshallah, you will receive the gift that you would have normally received at the $500 giving level. We have gifts for all these different giving levels, inshallah. Um, also, we have a special poem, a singable poem that you're going to hear later in the program, a brand new poem by Sheikh Abdullah Misra. Anyone that gives any donation tonight, even if it's just a dollar, you will receive this free ebook, this new poem that has been written. It's beautiful. You're going to hear it later in the program on the Battle of Badr. So there's a lot of benefits in giving today. But inshallah, if you have benefited from our programming in Ramadan, before Ramadan, throughout the last four years where we have brought you a webinar every 36 hours, inshallah, we hope that inshallah you will consider supporting Celebrate Mercy, especially on this blessed day of Badr, when we remember the sacrifice of the Badris, inshallah, the, the 313 heroes. We hope you'll consider supporting us, inshallah. And uh, you can go to launchgood.com slash CM, or you can scan this QR code, make a donation, and we will let you know how we're doing to maybe unlock that $17,000 match later in the program, inshallah. I'm going to go ahead and now introduce Sheikh Maryam Amir, uh, inshallah, who will give us the next part of this story uh, regarding the caravan of Abu Sufyan. 
Sheikha Maryam Amir received her master's in education from UCLA. She holds a second bachelor's degree in Islamic studies from Al-Azhar University. She studied in Egypt. She memorized the entire Quran. She's researched a variety of religious sciences. MashaAllah, for the past 15 years, she's been interviewed for her work by major news outlets, including BBC, NPR, and CBS. And she is the creator of the Qari'a app, the Women Quran Reciters app, which is available on Google Play and Apple stores or for free on www.qari'a.app. We'll post that link in the chat, inshallah. And let's go ahead and bring Sheikha Maryam to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد كثير طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. It was the first day of Ramadan, the very first day of Ramadan, when news came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, when the believers learned that there's a caravan that Abu Sufyan is going to pass by, with with, and it is full of riches. It was about fifty thousand dinars worth, and I want us to also acknowledge. That this is not simply a rich caravan. Abu Sufyan had ensured that anyone with money, anyone with, with property, anyone with nobility who was known in Mecca had something on that caravan that was attached to them. So this caravan was not simply a rich caravan. It had weapons, it had, it had provisions that would have been used against the Muslims when it reached Mecca. And so the Prophet ﷺ makes a decision, and that is to apprehend this caravan. Now, to leave the city of, of Medina, the Prophet ﷺ needs to put someone in charge. And this is a pivotal example for us as a community on what it means to have leadership in our community. Because the Prophet ﷺ could have put really so many options of individuals to be the head of the of, of, of the salah, of the of the city as he leaves. But he chose someone who converted early on. And this individual was blind. It was Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum. Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum was the companion that the Prophet وسلم, put in charge of the city of Medina. And he, as he and other companions left Medina to be able to apprehend, apprehend the caravan. When we speak about Muslims with disabilities in our community, we also need to ask ourselves, are we, are we ensuring, speaking as someone who is typically abled myself, am I ensuring that I am listening if I am in a space, if I have the capacity within a community, if I have the authority of a particular space in a community? Am I ensuring that I am, I am creating space for my brothers and sisters who have disabilities, for the children in the community who have disabilities? to also be a part of not simply existing or coming or being welcome to the masjid, which all of it is 100% necessary, but also being a part of the leadership of the masjid. Is that part of my motto and my framework in terms of how I engage with Muslims in the community? That was the engagement of the Prophet So the Prophet and his companions, they leave Medina and they're going to apprehend this caravan. Now, in the process, they are um, Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan learns about the the possibility of the Prophet Sallallahu of the companions following him. And how did he learn about this? Because he had news from an area where himself and Amr, uh, Amr ibn Al As, radiyallahu anhuma, because both of them accepted Islam eventually. They learned that. There, there, there were these camels and they checked the, the droppings of the camels. And inside of the droppings of the camels, they found date pits. And when they found date pits, they said, the only camels that eat dates are the camels from Medina. And then they realized that the, the Prophet wasallam and the companions are coming after this caravan. So Abu Sufyan had a call out, had someone run out to, to, to Medina and make a call to the um, nobility of Medina, to all the people of Medina, if you want to protect your property, because again, this caravan was full of the property of the, the, the royalty of the Quraysh, that you need to come with something to defend yourselves and defend your property. And a thousand Quraysh came out for that defense. Now, some of them ended up turning back, but the num number was still almost a thousand people. 
versus the Prophet وسلم, only had with him uh, a much smaller number وسلم, and also they had very few um, uh, riding mounts. So the Prophet وسلم, had his camel. Um, I believe that there were there was one or two horses and there were 70 camels around that. So the number of riders were very few in comparison to the number of people that were going out. These are people who were, these are companions who were walking on by foot with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on a two day journey, uh, 310 men of them, 313 to 317. Thank you so much for the slide. And so as they go out, they are, I'm going to shorten this um, longer uh, explanation because of the time. So basically, the Prophet ﷺ now realizes that there is going to be a battle. Instead of simply taking the goods of the caravan, they are now going to engage in war. And the Prophet ﷺ and the companions had not expected this. So he turns and does what? He makes shura. This is critical when we're looking at ourselves as individuals. Because of the Prophet ﷺ, obviously, is a prophet of God receiving revelation. He could have made an, uh, an order and everyone would have had to accept that order. And yet he did not do that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In, in fact, Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, mentioned that he never saw anyone consult the companions more often than the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, turns and asks towards these companions what they should do. And this is something we also need to acknowledge because the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had gone to Medina with the Aus and the, Khur, and the Khazraj and others in Medina, accepting that they would protect him and the companions in Medina when they were under attack. But this is outside of Medina now. Are these people still willing, these companions still willing to protect the Prophet them? Are they still willing to engage in what they had not initially given their pledge to? So Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma, both of them respond with affirmation that they will be with the Prophet them. And the Prophet them basically says to the effect of that he's not specifically asking them. He wants to hear from those from Medina, because he knows what Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma are both going to answer. And so Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anh, Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, the great companion who was um, injured in the battle of Uhud, and he was taken care of by Rufayda al-Aslamiya, the doctor, the surgeon amongst the women companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one whose death was such a, such a deep pain for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the one who responded to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And he said, O Prophet of Allah, we firmly believe in you and we witness that what descends on you is the truth. We swore a, sw swore a solemn oath and gave you the allegiance to so go ahead and whatever you want, we shall stand by your side. We swear by Allah who has sent you with the truth that if you reach the sea and cross it, we will cross it hand in hand with you. No man will lag behind or stay behind. We are absolutely ready to go to war against our enemy tomorrow for we are given to warfare and we are sincere in our desire to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he continued with his speech, affirming that they are with the Prophet Sallallahu Notice how he mentioned the sea, because the people of Musa were faced in front of a sea with Fir'aun behind them. And they said, go, well, they said, um, we are going to be drowned. And Musa Alayhi salam, what did he respond? Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is with me and he will guide me. Just like Sa'ad radiallahu anhu is uh, quoting Musa, Alayhi salam, that they will be with the Prophet وسلم, even through the sea. And we see the Prophet وسلم, in this time was so happy with Sa'ad radiallahu anhu's response. He was so happy to see that his response was one of affirmation, not simply for the faith of Islam, of course, but for the full submission and the cause of the Prophet. وسلم. And we have so many lessons for us in this example of the Prophet وسلم, and how he would take shura, how he would take consultation and ask in some of the most important times and even the matters that may have seemed mundane, the Prophet ﷺ would always take con um, uh, consultation with his community, all members of his community, and ensure that all of them were seen and heard and a part of the space, and especially right now with the genocide in Gaza and our Ummah suffering in Sudan and so many other parts of the world, this is time for us to return back to that prophetic model, seek community, build community, engage every individual in our community, and inshallah, work to uplift one another as the Prophet وسلم, sought victory and badr and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted it to him. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashir wa la ilaha ila an astaghfirikum tu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa
Mashallah. Sorry, I had a technical issue there, but I'm back. Um, mashallah, we're so grateful to have Sheikha Maryam uh, give us that context of right before, what happened right before the uh, the beginning of the Battle of Badr, the actual battle and the setup for the Muslims who were going to set up camp on the night before as well. Uh, the context of the caravan that the Muslims were initially planning to go after the caravan of Abu Sufyan and then how the battle uh, the battle formations began between the Meccans and the Muslims uh, of that time alhamdulillah so that was really really beautiful context beautiful story the commitment of the uh, the emigrants and the Ansar uh, of Medina uh, mashallah was amazing to see their loyalty to the Prophet Sallallahu So many lessons we can learn from that as well. And uh, inshallah, our next teacher will be Sheikha Tamara Gray. Uh, we want to continue to encourage you all to invite your friends to join us for the program, uh, inshallah. And just to update you on how we're doing with the donations, we're at the, we're, we've now reached the $5,000 level. So we're almost one third of the way there to unlock the matching grant that we talked about before and when you visit the launch good page inshallah you can read about all the different gifts for our donors this uh, specific book is a brand new biography in english of our mother fatima radiallahu anha the daughter of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i actually have a copy here even though this this is actually one of the early editions because it has just been printed in turkey but it's an amazing it's a leather-bound book, actually, uh, as you can see here. It's a leather-bound book, and uh, it's an amazing biography uh, of our mother, Fatima, radiallahu anha. And this book is on its way from Turkey right now. It's it's uh, on a boat from Turkey and will be ready by next month. So anyone who gives at the 313 level, not 500, but if you do th even 313 today, inshallah, you'll get a copy of this book. But there's also another other amazing gifts for larger donations, you can read all about it, uh, inshallah, on the Launch Good page as well. So you can go to launchgood.com slash CM, help us unlock that grant. Uh, and inshallah, I will go ahead now and introduce our next teacher, that is Sheikha Tamara Gray, inshallah. Sheikha Tamara Gray, Dr. Tamara Gray is the founder of Rabata, which is an organization dedicated to promoting positive cultural change through creative educational experiences. She holds a doctorate in leadership from the University of St. Thomas, and she spent 20 years studying traditional and classical Islamic sciences, Quran, and Arabic in Damascus, Syria. She's an instructor of many subjects at Rabata, and she is also an author and translator of several books. She sits on Collegeville Institute's Interreligious Fellows Program. She serves as a faculty and academic council member for the Islamic Seminary of America, teaches at the United Theological Seminary of the Twin Cities. She's a senior fellow at Yaqeen Institute, and she recently joined the Fiqh Council of North America. Mashallah, she's mother, a mother of three, grandmother of two, an avid reader, and a lover of cultures, people, coffee, and food. Uh, and road trips. She recently told me road trips as well. That wasn't in the scripted bio, but I remember. Uh, Good job. Good job <laughs> so, uh, for remembering. I'm so I'm I'll that. leave the stage to you, Dr. Tamara. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I will say that for the evening of the Battle of Badr, it is a momentous time for all of us, as we've been hearing from those who went before me, and I'm sure you'll continue to hear. I'm tasked with the very blessed um, job of talking about the night before Badr. And it is a night where Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad teaches us what to worry about when faced with great danger, with great danger. He teaches us what to worry about. He said to the Prophet Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, shall we not build for you a shelter for you to be in? and your camels by you. Then when we face the enemy and if Allah bolsters us and gives us victory over our enemy, that will be what we love. 
And if it is the other result, he doesn't say what the other result is, but if it's the other result, you will ride your camels and join those of us who remained in Medina. Now listen to this part. For verily, there are people who stayed behind whose love for you is no less than ours. And had they known you would be facing war, they would never have held back from you. They will be your protection and they will give you sound counsel and strive with you. So what's the criteria? Love. That is the criteria. We need to keep our Prophet وسلم, safe at Battle of Badr. And Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad is certain that if they fail, that he's, he's analyzed and thought about it. And he's realized it's okay. Those who remained back in Medina for the various reasons, they also love him with strength and with commitment. And so he'll be safe. And the Prophet Sallallahu praised Sa'ad and made dua for him. And so they did. They made a shelter. They built a shelter, built a shelter out of palm fronds. So it wasn't a, a very um, sturdy structure, but it was a structure nonetheless. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went inside and Abu Bakr went inside. And now Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad could feel that he had done what he could to protect Rasulullah And as we walk into Battle of Badr tonight, I want us to think about what structure have we built for the Prophet Sallallahu in our heart? Where do we have in our heart that keeps his person, his status safe with us? Where do we have in our heart that keeps our love for the Prophet Sallallahu safe? In fact, maybe I should ask, have we spent some time examining our heart to make sure that we have love in our heart for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, inside of this makeshift shelter, <clears throat> excuse me, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will spend the entire night in prayer, awaiting this very grave incident tomorrow, an incident where there is fear that the Prophet and those who are worshipping Allah will be wiped off the face of the earth. That's the intention of Quraysh. That's their intention. So with this great fear, and I want you to understand the great fear. It's very easy for us to look back and say, oh, you know, mashallah, it was hard, but they were fine. I want you to understand the great fear. And so two things happen. Two things. One, the Prophet spends the night in prayer fully in dua, calling out to Allah Azza wa Jal, calling out to him, pleading with him for the Muslims, pleading with him for Islam, pleading with him for their success in this very frightening battle. And the second thing that happens, the companions go to sleep. The companions go to sleep, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> I believe we read this verse in the beginning. When Allah, this was a sleep from Allah. It was a sleep that Allah gave them to grant them a full rest a full rest to give them serenity, it's translated as. Remember when he caused drowsiness to overcome you, giving you serenity. And he sent down rain from the sky to purify you, tahirakum, free you from Satan's whispers and strengthen your hearts and make your steps firm. When, you, when we are facing anything in our life, we are going to find ourselves needing to avoid the whispers of shaitan. We are going to, we have to remember this and remember we need to tahir our hearts. And if we really want to follow this sunnah, then we need the people of Allah to make dua for us. Because the Allah gave them the opportunity to sleep, to face the next day with full rest. But that sleep was backed up with the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is, this is what we need. We need to have a large 
rising tide of those who have answered dua, those who are fully following in the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Those who when they put their hands up and make dua, now the rest of the ummah can rest. Ya Allah. Anyway, so that night, the, the Prophet Sallallahu spent the whole night in prayer. And then at the Fajr prayer, he called for the people. He called for them. And I want you to visualize with me what this is going to look like. The Prophet Sallam calls out for them to come to pray Fajr and they come from everywhere. They had gone into all different spaces to look for shelter from the rain. The rain that was purifying them was also coming down from the sky. So if you're sleeping, I don't know about you, but I would, I don't know if I could sleep through it. But they had, we were able to, and they had gone to places to find refuge from the rain, under trees, makeshift shelters, all different places. And so now the Prophet calls them for Fajr and they all, can you imagine it? They all stand up and they come forth. And I wonder how the Prophet felt to see them all coming forth with courage and rested and strength. And so they had the blessing before facing that day to stand with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and pray and pray with him. And then the Prophet spoke to them about courage and hope. And then he lined them up to face the advance of the enemy. Now he's standing them together and he's making sure they're standing in a straight line. He has an arrow shaft and he's kind of push poking them and pushing them into different places. And one of the Ansar was out of line. So the Prophet ﷺ poked him so that he would go back in line. And uh, he said, because that's how as the, as the line should be which by the way is how the prayer line should be subhanallah and just think about that when you're standing up for tarawih tonight how we're standing together to fight our spiritual enemies our real enemies when we stand in prayer that's the real strength that's when we have real strength anyway so sawad ibn ghazia was the one who was out of line he poked him and he said ya rasulullah will you hurt me and allah sent you in truth and justice so i want retaliation so the Prophet Sallallahu immediately, without discussion, he bears his stomach and said, okay, retaliate. And he meant, go ahead and poke me. But so Ad, he runs to him and he embraces the Prophet Sallallahu The one who spent all night praying for them. The one who was pleased to see them coming for Fajr. The one who prayed with them and then spoke to them. He hugged him and kissed him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, what did you do that for? He said, Ya Rasulullah, you see what is facing us. I wanted my final encounter to be that my skin would touch your skin. And so the Prophet ﷺ made dua for him. Now, the next piece is very important. We've, we've come here understanding love. The next piece is very important. And that is the lesson of restraint. The Prophet ﷺ speaks to them and says, do not do anything until I tell you to do it. And you don't react to fear. Don't react to emotions. Don't react to what you see. Wait till I tell you what to do. And also he gives them a long discussion around using the right tool. Use the arrow at the right time. The sword at the right time. The stone at the right time. The spear at the right time. All of these are the weapons of war. We have our own weapons of war in this day and age, and we need to know how to use them at the right time. Our dua, our salah, our dua in Ramadan, our dua when we break our fast, our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our sadaqah, all of these are things we can do to help the situation we're in today. So the start, the battle begins. And it begins with dua, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turning up, putting his hands up in the air. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, here come Quraysh in their pride and arrogance to oppose you and your messenger. Ya Rab, grant us your promised victory and destroy them this morning. Now notice, a promised victory is not an automatic victory. It needs work and dua. And that's another important lesson. A pro a promised victory is not an automatic victory. Abu Bakr says to the Prophet ﷺ, glad tidings, Ya Rasulullah. Glad tidings. By the one in whose hands is my life, Allah will grant you what he has promised you. So now, 
restraint, and then Abu Bakr reminds us all love and reassurance. The first group of Quraysh comes forth, and they come forth at first to drink, and the Prophet says, let them be. It wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right time. Restraint. But then when Al-Aswad ibn Abd al-Asad al-Makhzumi said, I'm going to drink from their basin, destroy it or die trying. And he attacks. Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib comes forth to meet him. And now Utba ibn Rabia will call for a duel. First, the Ansar come forth. But the Quraysh say, no, I want, we want to fight our cousins, their relatives, the Muhajirin. Now, if we can pull up the picture, you will see the names of the people who, the, the, the map of this moment of duel. And here it is. So when we're looking at a duel, this is a, it's a scary thing. I mean, it's one-on-one -on -one, and they're insisting that they are their relatives. And so as you can see, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib will go against Shayba and uh, Ubaida goes against Utba and Ali goes against Al-Walid ibn Utba. So we've got a duel. Everyone else has to just watch. That's restraint. They have to just watch. Ubaida is, is wounded. And then, but they win against these dueling partners. And as Ubaida turns to the Prophet ﷺ, before the war fully breaks out, he says, am I not a martyr? Ya Rasulullah. You can put the picture down. And so as we see this stage, the night before the battle, we see the importance of love for the Prophet ﷺ, the importance of dua and prayer, the importance of having someone make dua for us, the importance of restraint and knowing when to do what, the importance of dua. And as Ubaidah reminds us to be ready to sacrifice. This is where victory is in these six things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a victory that pleases him. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you to Dr. Tamara Gray for the beautiful description of the night before Badr and the morning of Badr, mashallah. Um, right before the armies meet in combat. Uh, what an amazing, if you just were closing your eyes and imagining being there with these 313 heroes, ill-equipped, uh, Ill going up against an army three times their size. Uh, they were expecting to attack a caravan, but then ended up having to face an army three times their size and not flinching, not uh, not want not not uh, wanting to turn back and go back to Medina, but willing to give up their lives to defend the Prophet Sallallahu to defend Islam, to defend this growing community of believers. And as I said earlier in the webinar, where would we be today if the Battle of Badr went the other way? Where would we be today if Badr went the other way? Uh, subhanallah. Um, so uh, what an amazing talk that she just gave to give us, you know, um, the moments before both armies met one another. We will be going to our next teacher in a moment, Dr. Shadi Al-Masri. I wanted to show you all uh, some of the beautiful pictures that you have been sending us. We asked you all to post about this webinar, tagging Celebrate Mercy, using the hashtag or emailing us your photos, and we have a raffle at the end of the program uh, with some really big prizes you can win. We're going to be giving away three big prizes, and you've you all have been sending these beautiful pictures. Someone taking notes during the webinar here, Jasmine Diab, and we have others posting here, uh, Tausif, uh, and others posting these pictures. Mashallah. Um, these are some initial ones that we've received, but there are others as well coming in. People posting to their Instagram stories. So you can still do this uh, throughout the program, especially if you hear a beautiful quote or an insight or a gem from our teachers, inshallah, post about it, tag Celebrate Mercy, use the hashtag, 
and your name will be added, inshallah, to uh, to that raffle at the end of the program. Or if you've donated tonight, even a dollar, you will be, inshallah, to our launch good page, you will be entered into the raffle as well, inshallah, if you've supported in any way. I also wanted to mention another family who's sponsoring the program today because we we have families who are continuing to sponsor these webinars. We do have some, some webinars that we still need sponsors for. Uh, until the end of Ramadan, but this family, their du'a request was, Ya Rabbi, Ya Jabbar, Ya Shafi, mend our families and our ummah and heal us perfectly. Give us the best of this world and the hereafter. Ameen. And this family said that our daughter was diagnosed with depression and anxiety and recently attempted suicide. Alhamdulillah, she feels better now. Please keep us in your du'as, inshallah. So everyone, please say, Amin to this beautiful dua, and we thank this family for uh, sponsoring, helping with this webinar's costs, and we hope, inshallah, everyone can keep them in your dua, inshallah. And you can go to celebratemercy.org slash sponsor. We even have some webinars in the final 10 nights of Ramadan where we still need sponsors, and, and maybe you all can uh, help us do that. Don't forget to click on that like button and subscribe, inshallah. And uh, where you can go to donate tonight is launchgood.com slash CM. We have a special category that we added on the LaunchGood page called, for at this level, $313. We're encouraging everyone to give at least this amount uh, in honor of the heroes of Bedr. But whatever you give, make an intention tonight that you want to give back. May Allah grant the reward of my donation tonight to the heroes of Bedr. It won't diminish any of your own reward or your blessings, but inshallah, you're gifting them for preserving Islam for us today by taking that brave stand at the battle of Bedr, inshallah. So consider that, uh, inshallah, um, as you are donating and supporting Celebrate Mercy tonight, inshallah, so we can bring more of these programs to you uh, throughout the year, uh, inshallah, as we celebrate and commemorate and remember the legacy and the life and the character of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I'm going to go ahead now and introduce Dr. Shadi Al-Masri, who will uh, go into the battle itself, inshallah, the battle of Badr itself and the fighting that, that took place between both armies. Let me introduce Dr. Shadi. Dr. Shadi Al-Masri was born and raised in New Jersey, uh, and he began studying Islam at the age of 18, traveling to a number of countries, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and Morocco. In addition to traditional learning, he received a master's from the George Washington University and a PhD from the University of London, SOAS. And Dr. Al-Masri went on to teach at several universities, including Yale, SOAS, Trinity College, Hartford Seminary, and Manhattanville College, and currently serves as scholar in residence at the New Brunswick Islamic Center in New Jersey. He's also the founder and head of Safina Society, which is an institution dedicated to the cause of traditional Islamic education in the West. So without any further delay, let's bring Dr. Shadi to the stage, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi man wala. Well, today we're covering now at this moment the actual fighting of the Battle of Badr. And this is, in most of our understandings, the exciting part. And the way that I want everyone to think about it is that in any battle, in any war, the mental part of the battle is far more important than the physical part. And many people make a mistake and only look at the numbers. How many weapons do you have? How many weapons do the other side, other side have? This is a big mistake. Right? This is a huge mistake. And the truth of the matter is that more important than the physical weaponry, than the, even the numbers, is the mental aspect. That is actually part of the battle. So when we talk about this, what is the status of the mental uh, situation of these both camps? and the morale of both camps. And the Prophet ﷺ stood before all the companions and it's essentially was seeking the support of the Ansar because this is not what they signed up for. As for the Quraysh, the Muhajirs, 
they knew they had to fight. But the Ansar themselves, the Prophet, peace be upon him, began to speak, started saying, uh, who's with us? What is your opinion? Should we fight? Should we not fight? So Omar spoke, but the Prophet wasn't, didn't move because he did not worried about the, 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 the Muhajirs. And then Miqdad ibn al-Aswad spoke. And he said, oh, Messenger of Allah, do you, we're not going to be like the Bani Israel who said to Moses, go you and your Lord and fight, and we're staying put. But rather, go you and your Lord, and go, uh, we, rather we say, go you and we're with and your Lord, and we are with you fighting. So again, the Prophet, peace be upon him, waited. And then, finally, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh stood up, and he is a representative the Ansar and he elevated everyone's morale by saying oh messenger of Allah if you're asking about us then you invited us to believe and we believed you forbade us from things and we abstained you commanded us to do certain things and we fulfilled we obeyed so today we prove to you that we're men of our word and the prophet was extremely happy then Allah Ta'ala revealed three verses of Quran in succession each one elevated the morale of the Muslims one stage after another. The first one is an announcement that we're now supporting you with a thousand angels. So the Prophet ﷺ announced this to the companions and everyone was happy. Sometime later, Allah announced to him that we're supporting you with 3,000 angels. So now they felt they went up again in their morale. Then 5,000 angels, they went up again in the morale, and people don't know, is it, they discussed, is it the same one to three, so that now that they're added 2,000 more, and then added 2,000 more, or is it one, and three more, and 5,000 more? So it's a total of 9,000, we don't know. And at that point, one angel was enough, if you know the size of these malaika. So mentally speaking, the Sahaba went in with so much morale, and so much power that that oftentimes is part of the fighting. You cannot ever think that it's about weapons. Because when it's about weapons, the Sahaba had nothing. The maximum the Sahabi had was a sword and a shield. Maximum. And not all of them had that. Some of them had a staff. Some of them had a stick. Some of them had a blade. That's it. No one had armor with them. When the fighting began, in the old days, you stand off one side, uh, one army on one side, one army on the other side. And then you sort of, you have the uh, a type of warm-up where you send out individual fighters. And they this time around, they sent out three. The Quraysh sent out three people. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent out, also sent out Hamza and Ali and Ubaidah, all from his family, showing I'm going to put my family on the line first. That this is not some royalty where my family sits safely and you all do the fighting for us. No, the Prophet sent out his family first. So whenever we talk about Ahl al-Bayt and we praise them, when we say all these wonderful things about them, and you may think in your head, why should they get that when it's an accident of birth, right? We say, well, it's they get that honor and respect and they also get a heavier responsibility because when it's time to die, the Prophet put his own family out first. Ali and Hamza won their battles. Obeida was severely hit with a with a with a terrible wound, but the Sahaba, uh, but Ali and Hamza finished him. Afterwards, there were some more skirmishes and more one on ones. And then finally, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took in, uh, took some pebbles and threw them. Why did he do this? Because this battle right here is very similar to another foundational battle. Entire nation, their fate is going to turn on this one battle. Well, what other nation did their fate turn on a similar battle? Very similar to this was David and Goliath. David and Goliath, they were only also a handful of people, like 300 people, and facing an entire army in front of them of the Amalekites. And Sayyidina Dawood, what did he do? He's, he flung his slingshot, which is a rock. And Allah says in the Quran, These are the ones whom Allah 
guided. So take an example by their guidance. So anytime that the prophet was in a situation, he, 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 he thought back at what he was taught about the, the prophets before him. And he mimicked them. Yeah. And this one, he took it and he threw it in there, uh, threw these pebbles at them. And Allah caused all these pebbles to break up and enter the eyes of the Quraysh. This is a miracle. Just like David and Goliath was a miracle. It was kharik al-ada. It was outside the norm. Because usually you hit someone uh, uh, with, a, with a slingshot in the head. Chances are they'll have a bad concussion. They'll have a bad, maybe they'll not be knocked out. But chances are they might not die. But Goliath died, fell on the spot. So the Prophet ﷺ did this and Allah says, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ So this is weaponry. When Allah is with you, this is a type of weaponry that has to be accounted for. It's only, we can't see it and we can't quantify it. So وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ means, O oh, Messenger, when you threw, you were not the only one. Your action with your hand was not the only action that was happening. That's the meaning of وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ So how is Allah saying, you didn't throw when you threw? It means... Your throwing was not the only thing happening there. You threw, but that's not all that was happening. What else was happening was Allah commanding those rocks to break up and become dust and enter into the eyes of the enemy. In a war like this, you can't be one second off. You can't be a, a, a millisecond off. Your other enemy will get to you earlier before you do. And that's exactly what happened. When they came together, the, the Quraysh were busy c clearing their eyes out. And as a result of all that, uh, as a result of that, the Muslims were able to rout them. And they were able to get to their enemy while their enemy was unprepared. But nonetheless, let's think about this. If there's a thousand on one side and 313 or so on the other side, uh, how much time do you, do you have to go and attack three of the enemy? And on top of that, you don't have weapons and they have armor and shields and everything. So this even wasn't enough. So the Prophet ﷺ, uh, the, the Sahaba then narrated that we would be running at the enemy and they would be running away from us in a way that is unexpected. Reason being, Allah put fear in their hearts. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Nusirtu bil rab So part of this battle is that part of this battle is that Allah Ta'ala placed fear in the hearts of the enemy and he lifted the morale of the other side. So the Sahabi said we'd be running behind a person and is he would be fell down to the ground without us even touching him. And that was the Malaika. Those who had very strong Iman their, and their hearts were clear, they, would ab they were able to see some of the angels coming and going. And they say that Jibreel came on that day wearing a yellow turban. Bedouins reported that two of them were sitting Watching the battle because the battle had there were mountains around, so two Bedouins sat watching the battle, and then all of a sudden they heard really loud hoofs, hoofs and riding of a horse right in front of them. So they got shocked. One of them got so shocked that that he had a heart attack, and the other one he understood why he was so scared. So he assumed right away, oh, he had a heart attack. That's how scared he was. So in this battle of Badr, when you look at the fighting, the fighting consists not just of weaponry and human material elements. There are other unseen elements such as the mental morale when you go into a battle, such as the anger as well. Don't, don't underestimate this point. Allah calls it, They had ghil, they had anger. We got robbed. We're human beings. These are not angels. We are not Christians who just say, turn the other cheek. No, we got robbed. We're angry about this. We got kicked out of our homes. We got our reject religion was rejected. Our prophet was rejected. Our wealth was stolen. All this is part of it too. This is part of the battle. And they're human beings. Right? That it ha had these feelings about their religion and about their own personal property. Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever's killed for his wealth, he's a shaheed. He's a shaheed. So we're supposed to care about these things. Then there is the spiritual element of things. All of these are part of the battle. And this battle is a very easy analysis. It was a route completely. One-way street. Unlike the battle of Uhud, battle of Khandaq, different things were happening. No, this was a one-way right from the get-go, a complete route. Because when angels are part of the battle and 5,000 angels, how are you going to have competition?
And so the battle ended very quickly and very one-sidedly. And upon this battle, a new civilization was born. And some say, don't say civilization, say deen. Is a civilization implies buildings and governments and stuff. And this is not what Islam came for. Islam came to give religion to these civilizations, to give faith to civilization. Yeah, civilization in Andalus, civilization in Indonesia, civilization in Timbuktu, but they need a faith. They need a religion. And this deen was born and was founded essentially on this battle. The Prophet ﷺ said, If this group of people die off, and you allow them to die and be killed, you won't be worshipped on the earth. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to rout the enemy. And the beginning of the establishment of the city of Medina and the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa began after that. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you, Dr. Shadi. What an My amazing, pleasure. what an amazing, amazing uh, narration of the story. We're really grateful to have you with us. Thank you so much, Dr. My Shadi. pleasure. My pleasure. Wa sit down. So, inshallah, we encourage you to stay connected with him, at Dr. Shadi, at safinasociety.org. Um, we still have more coming your way uh, with this program. Uh, more teachers joining us, inshallah, including a brand new, never heard before song that was written by Sheikh Abdullah Misra uh, uh, about the Battle of Badr, which will we will be hearing here shortly, and we will be hearing also from Sheikh Yasser Fahmi as well coming up soon, uh, inshallah. Just an update, we said that we had a generous donor uh, who is going to match if we can reach $17,000 in donations tonight to celebrate mercy, to help us with our Ramadan fundraiser. Uh, it's our biggest fundraising time of the year then that donor will match another 17,000 because this is the 17th of Ramadan. So we are now at $7,000 raised during this webinar so far, uh, almost at the halfway mark, inshallah, but we need to raise some more. So please consider supporting Celebrate Mercy. And just remember, look at, look at what our team is bringing you in Ramadan. If these programs are benefiting you, uh, we are doing two, sometimes three webinars every day for 30 days. We are bringing you 90 webinars uh, this month. Uh, some, you know, some every night. We have a program starting right after this one at 11 p.m., the 30 Nights of Light. Uh, mashallah. Tonight we have Sheikh Yasser Fahmi joining and Ustada Husay Mujaddidi and Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud and Imam Nihal Khan starting at 11 p.m. But we have other programs on Mondays and Wednesdays. We have programs for kids programs for tweens, programs for teens. And inshallah, if you haven't joined any of these programs uh, or want to register for them, all of them except the teenager course are free. And they're free because you all generously support this organization with your monthly donations, with your one-time donations. And on nights like this, you all step up and donate inshallah. So we want to encourage you all to donate tonight and make your intention as you give that you are also giving on behalf of the heroes of Badr, the 313 uh, heroes who sacrificed sincerely in solidarity for us to have Islam today. Where would we be today if Badr went the other way? And inshallah, you can donate at launchgood.com slash CM. And maybe we can get 313 of you to donate at least $313. Don't forget that we have a Zakat eligible scholarship fund as well. This, this is a specific fund on the Launch Good page that you can donate towards. And we support incarcerated Muslims with books. We support those who are Zakat eligible to attend programs, conferences, trips that they cannot afford. But through your support, inshallah, we are able to help with a scholarship fund. And anyone who donates any amount today, We'll get this ebook of this new song that you are about to hear by Sheikh Abdullah Misra, inshallah. Even if you give a dollar today or $313 or $3.13, inshallah, you will get a copy of this song, inshallah, sent to you by email. Just make sure you put in your email when you make your donation so we can send you this, inshallah. So, again, where do you go to support 
this work, these programs, publications, campaigns, trips, kids programs, programs for adults, uh, all of these different things, inshallah, go to launchgood.com slash CM. That's again, launchgood.com slash CM. And you'll see there on the Launch Good page, there's a lot of beautiful gifts we have for our donors who are supporting. We send you these gifts in the mail, inshallah. Again, launchgood.com slash CM. So I'm now going to go ahead and bring to the stage, I believe, Sheikh Abdullah Misra, and we're going to hear the song with a beautiful uh, reciter and singer, Elias, as well. Um, so I have Elias. I think you're joining us right now. Yes, that's right. MashaAllah. Do we have uh, also Sheikh Abdullah with us yet? Maybe not. Uh, but... Um, Mashallah, you are a beautiful Nasheed artist uh, who sings beautifully. And inshallah, um, before we show this video of the song, do you want to say uh, say a few words, inshallah, about what this song is all about? Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. So I, um, <laughs> I was asked by Sheikh Abdullah last year. He's like, hey, you know, there's a, a po poem that I was writing for almost 15 years. Uh, subhanAllah, last year I was on a tour uh, across Canada for iftar, you know, performances. But this year, subhanAllah, um, he brought it up again, right? And uh, I'm like, let me read it. Let me read the poem. I, I read it and subhanAllah, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it and right away, a melody started to form in my head. So it's educational, it's inspirational. Right. Um, and it gets you going, subhanAllah. It's, you know, it's it's part of our 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 history. And, you know, many people don't know about this battle. Right. So it's it's important that we highlight this battle and, and, and the, the lessons that we learn from it. And uh, yeah, it's you know, it's it's a special project. And subhanAllah, we literally just finished recording and getting it mixed and mastered. And uh, I'm really excited for you guys to, to check it out tonight, inshallah. Inshallah. Well, it's an amazing project. And for those who don't know, Sheikh Abdullah Misra, um, we, uh, Sheikh Abdullah, you're here. I see you. Mashallah. There you are. There <laughs> um, it is. Salaam alaikum. Alaikum Sheikh Abdullah, did you want to say a few words before we actually play this, uh, play this amazing audio? Yes, Bismillah. First of all, I want to thank Celebrate Mercy and everyone else, Mashallah, who made this project, Mashallah, a reality. Um, and has hosted it and supported it, uh, Brother Muiz, uh, 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 IGI as well, MashaAllah, and Wazali Institute. Of course, Brother Ilyas, uh, Mao for singing the song. This song, back in 2008, when I was studying the Sira, I thought to write a song about every single historical event. So you have the Sira song that was like the entire life of the Prophet Sallallahu Then I said, we need to break up the entire Sira into different songs so that we can do a whole musical nasheed experience of learning the Sira. The Battle of Badr has been sitting there for 15 years, just like under the surface. And alhamdulillah, one of my friends, dear friends, uh, Brother Moiz, really was telling me, you got to get this out, you got to get this out. And I said, because of what's happening in Gaza, the message of the song, as you will see, is that when you're going through hard times, stay close with Allah, stay on your principles, and the help of Allah will come in ways that you never imagined before. And just because the Ummah seems like it's fallen down, don't, don't, despair because Allah can turn affairs around. So I asked Allah, just like Sira's song with Zain Bika, I said, I wanted the right voice to sing it. And mashallah, Brother Ilyas was that beautiful voice as you'll see, inshallah. Amazing. Well, I, I'm sure everyone's now on the edge of their seat waiting to hear this, inshallah. And um, uh, may Allah bless both of you for, you know, yeah. serving our deen through this beautiful work. And uh, Sheikh Misra, you know, you've done it You've done it again with another beautiful song that honors our beloved Prophet Sallallahu So I pray that you are blessed as, uh, you know, as uh, and that you are in the in a line of those who have been serving the Prophet Sallallahu uh, through their voice and through their uh, beautiful words, like uh, like uh, our dear uh, companion, the companion of the Prophet uh, Hassan bin Thabit. Inshallah, may you be raised in their ranks. Inshallah. I mean. I mean, thank you so much. May Allah bless you all as well for the work that you're doing and raise you with the ranks of the lovers of the Prophet. I mean, I mean, all of us, inshallah, all of us, all who are tuned in as well, inshallah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and hear the song. And as I mentioned before, 
We have a special for the 17th of Ramadan, whether today is your 17th of Ramadan, maybe tomorrow is your 17th of Ramadan, but anyone who donates any amount to, to our Launch Good campaign, inshallah, you will receive an email. Make sure you share your email when you donate. We'll send you this PDF, of a beautifully published PDF of this song, the lyrics, so you can do this with your families and your communities. Sing this at, at home, inshallah, in your own homes, inshallah. Let's go ahead and play this video. Bismillah. The battle of Badr was fought On a fateful day between shirk and hub Only one could have its way with the help of a Maybe we need to play that one more time. Let's start over, <laughs> inshallah. Bismillah. And I can also play it on my side if there's a, a challenge here. Let me know. Bismillah. Okay, let me. Should I bring up the video on my side? Because we may have technical. The battle of Badr was fought on a fateful day between Shirk and Hub. Only one could have its way with the help of Allah. The Muslims overcame, and from that day on, everything would change. In the second year of Hijrah, the month of Ramadan, near the wells of Badr, at the break of dawn, Muslims saw the pagans across the barren sand, driven from their homes. It was time to take a stand. Our prophet came with 313 of his best. its way with the help of Allah. The Muslims overcame and from that day on, everything would change. Ali Hamza Ubaidah, the champions of Islam, first to face the opponents with their swords in hand. After that, the arrows began to shower down as the hooves of the horses thundered And how only one could have its way with the help of Allah. The Muslims overcame, and from that day on, everything would change. The companions went forth with full trust in Allah. Victory, oh heaven, the only things they saw. When the battle grew heavy, the Prophet went to pray. Its way with the help of Allah. 
The Muslims overcame and from that day on Everything would change The end of the battle the pagans slipped to fight Muslims won by their faith, not military might In all times the believers must remain steadfast Drawing strength from the trials of the Muslims in the past Stand for truth and justice and protect the weak Your prophet is friends and family Subhanallah, wow, amazing uh, I see Dr. Shetty backstage I'm going to bring you back Dr. Shetty I want to see what you thought of that <laughs> No, I just, uh, uh, you know that I just I saw you, I I, you kind of like move into the rhythm there I, I, I was and I, uh, I have to say I, You know that I just realized that you wrote the Sira song Sheikh Abdullah. I didn't know that you wrote the Sira song. Wrote the Sira song and I heard it at, at, at Maqasid with Sheikh Yahya, and I was like, whoa. I leaned over and I said, Sheikh, where did you find this? Who is this? And he said, oh, that's Sheikh Abdullah. You didn't know that? So wow. immediately I got it, and we do it now in our masjid. We, we plan to recite it now in our masjid when we do our dhikr gatherings. And this one, uh, the melody was words are easy to understand. Melody, for some reason, I felt like I went back to the 80s. Right, <laughs> there, there's exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> so, wow. you guys nailed it. Congratulations! You clarify, this is vocals only, right? Shikha vocals Mishra. only, no instruments. All Brother Ilyas's voice. Allah Akbar. And I have a little part in the chorus, but yeah. Ilyas did a genius, master level Good. rendition okay. of everything with a voice alone. Mashallah. It, it, it was, cool. and Brother Ilyas, you know that you're like a legend in our house here during COVID. Uh, they, my um, family discovered, they said, oh, you got to listen to Ilyas Mal. So, <laughs> mashallah, you guys hit it out of the park. Congratulations. Um, Thank you guys so much for sharing this. And Sheikh Misra, you want to say about the dedication for this? Yes, yes. This song is dedicated to the children of Gaza, especially the children of Gaza, who have gone through so much. And just like the 313 companions, they're facing incredible odds, but we're all with them. And so any good that comes from this, I ask Allah to give it to the children of Gaza. I mean, and, mashallah, and, and, mashallah. I mean, and, 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 wonderful job, wow. mashallah. You feel like you just want to get up and march when you hear that song, mashallah. Totally. This, this is going to be everyone's like workout music now. Like, just they're like, <laughs> going to be pumping iron and listening to the better song, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Khair. Thank you so much for all your service uh, to the deen and to the Prophet. Thank you. Amen. 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 Allah reward you. May Allah reward you. Amen. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Khair. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. So just a reminder to everyone who uh, was, just heard that, if you want a PDF of this song sent to you, uh, a beautiful PDF with the lyrics, uh, all you need to do is just make any, any donation today to our Launch Good page and include your email when you donate, inshallah, for our Ramadan fundraiser. We will send you the ebook on, you know, on the 17th of Ramadan. Even if you're watching the recording and it's still the 17th of Ramadan, we will send it to you, inshallah. And uh, where do you go to make that donation? You see it there, but you can go. Here's another slide that shows it. Launchgood.com/cm, and especially if you can donate at the level of three hundred and thirteen dollars, um, there's a special giving level that you can give, inshallah, and make an intention that you're also gifting the reward and the blessings of your donation to the heroes of Badr, inshallah, the heroes of Badr. Uh, inshallah, think of all that they've done for us. Would we be even? Would we even be here today, celebrating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, celebrating our Deen, commemorating these these days, if it wasn't for the heroes of Badr? We owe everything to them uh, for protecting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, protecting this Deen uh, from annihilation. Imagine if Badr had went the other way. So, inshallah, we hope that you will uh, donate generously, whatever you can give. Uh, inshallah. 
and uh, and may Allah count it and the blessings of the heroes of Badr, inshallah. I'm going to go ahead now and introduce our next teacher. Now, don't forget, at the end of the program, in the final segment, we have a beautiful recitation of all 313 names, 313 names from uh, from Badr, inshallah, and with a dua with a dua for them. But I'm going to go ahead and introduce to our audience Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, inshallah. I'm not seeing actually Sheikh Yasser backstage, so I want to make sure he has the the link to join us, inshallah. There we go. Bismillah. Yo, okay. So I think he'll be joining in a minute or two, inshallah. He'll be joining us. Um, what I'll do real quick is just mention one other thing here, which I didn't really share much about before. But um, uh, we have, as I mentioned, the gifts for the donors. But when I when I want to, if I want to summarize in sixty seconds, all that Celebrate Mercy has been doing, um, Inshallah, we mentioned before. You know, why would you support this organization? Well, in four years, we've given you a webinar every thirty six hours and one hour of programming every single day. We have been working really hard to bring you this content for your families, for your children, for your teenagers. Uh, and, you know, the testimonials, we have hundreds, we actually have thousands of testimonials like this over the past 14 years of people who have been really impacted by this work. We have amazing testimonials from parents about their children. We have had almost 20,000 children enrolled in our children's programs in the past 29 months. So when you ask, like, where is your money going? When you donate to Celebrate Mercy, what good is it doing? Well, this is the good that it's doing. Alhamdulillah, this, these programs that teach about the life and the character of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, this is because of your generosity. When we bring these webinars to you, when we bring these conferences to you around the country now, since the pandemic has ended, we have been bringing now conferences. Just in January, we brought, we brought this conference to Houston, Texas. Is anyone here joining us from Houston? Let us know if you are here at this program and we plan to bring more. We have been taking groups to Jerusalem and to Mecca and Medina. One, about one third of those who join these trips are there through financial aid scholarships. Uh, and you all have been helping with that as well. So these are just some of the flyers from these trips as well. We have published and helped publish seven books in the past two years, uh, including these children's activity guides uh, as well. So we have been busy at work bringing you programs, campaigns, webinars, uh, videos on social media. Um, so inshallah, if you have benefited from this work, this is the time to support Celebrate Mercy. It is our busiest fundraising time of the year, and we have someone willing to donate $17,000 if we can raise $17,000 on this 17th day of Ramadan, the day of Badr, inshallah. Uh, and if you give at that 313 level, you will also get this gift that you normally would have gotten if you had if you donated 500. So uh, that's actually a, a nice perk for giving the 313 is you get the, the gift that you would have gotten at the $500 level as well, inshallah. So there's a lot of beautiful gifts you can read about, including the six-inch... Um, pieces of the uh, uh, Rauda rug from, from years ago, certified uh, pieces of the Rauda carpet in Medina and in the Haram in Mecca at the Kaaba, inshallah. These are from, uh, I think, 10 plus years ago with a certificate of authenticity, uh, inshallah. And we also have olive oil from the Haram in Jerusalem, from the olive trees of Masjid al-Aqsa as well. Very limited quantity here, but you know, uh, at these larger levels, you can get some really, really unique and beautiful gifts as well, inshallah. So we want to encourage you all to continue supporting this work. Help us to unlock that matching grant tonight, inshallah, and get closer to our Ramadan goal. And we hope all of you have been liking and subscribing as we go on with the webinar, inshallah. So I'm going to go ahead and check backstage 
inshallah, I believe, yes, we have Sheikh Yasser with us. I'm going to introduce him for the concluding remarks of the webinar before we recite the 313 names of the heroes of Badr, inshallah. Sheikh Yasser Fahmi graduated from Rutgers Business School. And after working for a number of years in finance, he then moved to Egypt, where he studied for eight years at Al-Azhar University. And in his time at Al-Azhar, Sheikh Yasser attained numerous ijazas, that's independent certifications. And he studied under many notable teachers, including Sheikh Ahmed Taha Rayyan, may Allah have mercy on his soul. And in 2013, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi became the first American Azhari to teach in the renowned Al-Azhar Mosque in Cairo in Egypt. And currently he is the lead instructor and founder of Prophetic Living. And we will be also having Sheikh Yasser Fahmi join us tonight uh, in the Nights of Light program, which is our nightly program. So inshallah, right after this webinar, uh, you can join that. Um, you can join that on our YouTube channel as well. Um, the Knights of Light program, where he'll be joining Imam Nihal Khan, Ustada Hosai Mujaddidi, and Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud to discuss the 17th uh, Juz of the Quran, uh, inshallah, as we continue that nightly series. So let's go ahead now and we will bring uh, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi to the stage, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you? Have you? Like, Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la wa la hawla wa la quwati illa billah. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil awaleen. Wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina Muhammadin fil akhirin. Wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina maulana Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil malai al-ala ila yawmiddin. Alhamdulillah thumma alhamdulillah alhamdulillah. We thank Allah, we praise Him, and we are in awe of His majesty and His kindness and His grace. And we thank Him truly for allowing us to be amongst the servants of Allah who witness these nights, who acknowledge the reverence of these nights. SubhanAllah, when the Prophet wasallam, when he speaks about the uh, people of Badr, and he says, Perhaps it is the case that certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gazed upon the people of Badr. Do what you will, for certainly God has forgiven you. And subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, when we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the conduit of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, teaches us and tells us, of the distinction and the status of a category of our pious predecessors, those who, 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 who bore witness to the truth and who stood firm and who called to the way of Allah. And they really sacrificed everything they had for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every comfort, every pleasure, every luxury, every interest, dunyawi, purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is insightful for us to consider about the type of person we want to be. Because when we honor our pious predecessors, we are following in the footsteps of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are following in the footsteps of our teachers and our forefathers, our spiritual masters who taught us to honor and love and respect and care for those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. So when the Prophet tells us, perhaps it is Allah who gazed upon the people of Badr and those 313 beloved servants of Allah who witnessed that sacred moment, the same number of, that is equivalent to the number of Rusul, messengers, also equivalent as the messenger Muhammad Wasallam said to the uh, army of King Saul after they had crossed over the river, Talut, <clears throat> and those the Prophet ﷺ referred to those 313 as being mu'mineen, true believers. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to always orbit these worlds and we're never neg negligent or ignorant of this reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks about the people of Badr, he says, Laqad nasarakum Allahu bi Badrin wa antum adillah. 
فاتقوا الله لعلكم تشكرون that certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you victorious in Badr when you were adhilla dhalil can mean both weak in numbers but also weak in your social political status and that was certainly their identifiable trait this battle of Badr happened in the second year of the Hijrah which was which which paralleled with the first Ramadan in the history of Islam the first Ramadan in the history of Islam was in the second year. And in, in that first Ramadan was this seminal battle of Badr, which is one of, if not the most seminal moments in the history of our tradition. And it happened on the shoulders of these companions with our liege Lord Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam at the helm. And so when Allah is telling us that he brought them victory, وَهُمْ أَذِلَّهِ And they were weak in their socio-political and weak in their numbers. But from the ulama of Ishara, they indicate something here that's very subtle but beautiful. When Allah says, لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرِ When Allah brought you victory, be Badr. Now, the natural translation that many of us say is, in Badr, i.e. in the location of Badr. But some of the ulama of ishara, of indication, they say, Bi Badr, I, by the means of the Badr, by the means of the full moon, and that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, because one of the names of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is Al Badr al Tamam. He is the complete full moon. And so here we're being taught also that victory comes to you through the conduit of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That is a very powerful notion for us to consider is that when in these moments and these days and times that we're living in, when we feel when we feel so much loss and we feel at times weakness, we feel um, you know at times just devastated by the harms that are befalling our ummah. Well, we have to think about the extent to which we send to our beloved messenger Muhammad Sallallahu because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala does bestow upon His community. Victory through the conduit of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So that then becomes an imperative upon us To revive in our midst In our hearts, in our minds, in our homes Al-Haqiq Al-Muhammadiyya The reality of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And this Nasr This Nasr, this victory When when bestowed upon us Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهَ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ If Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala brings you victory Who can ever overcome you? And if he forsakes you, then whom so whom 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 you know can ever help you thereafter? Then upon Allah, let the believers rely. We must then become a community of believers that realize that the only source of victory is Allah wa Rasulu. Because Allah is saying, if I bring you victory, who can ever overcome you? Who can ever defeat you? No one. It is an impossibility. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to forsake a people or to abase a people, who can ever bring them victory? Who can ever uplift them? No one. So we know our source. We know our source of victory in this life. And regardless of how foggy this world around us becomes or how convoluted or how perplexing or how confusing, we have our North Star. We have our Qibla. Alhamdulillah. And that's why you see in, in, in these ayat around Surah uh, Ghazwat Badr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ تَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ أَنِّي مُمِدُّكُمْ بِأَلْفٍ مِّنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُرْدِفِينَ And when you begged your Lord, you made istighafah, talabtum al-ghawth, you, you, you beseeched your Lord seeking salvation, seeking aid, seeking support, seeking help. He answered you, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ أَنِّي مُمِدُّكُمْ بِأَلْفٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُرْدِفِينَ I will reinforce you with a thousand angels in succession as an indication of the following. إِن تَنْصُرُ اللَّهَ يَنْصُرْكُمْ وَيُثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَكُمْ You bring victory to Allah, Allah will bring victory to you and He'll make your feast steadfast and firm. We have to come in these moments, in these nights of Ramadan when we feel overwhelmed and we see the situation and the condition of our brothers and sisters in Palestine and India and Sudan and beyond. We have to come to Allah with a spirit of istighatha. Ya Allah, natlubu al-ghawth, al-ghawth, al-ghawth ya mughith. Ya Rabbi, you are the one who saves. You are the one who, 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 who brings victory. You are the one who allows us to, to rise above. 
to be pulled from the depth of darkness. Arithna ya murid, save us, ya Allah. And when we turn to Allah with that type of sincerity, then that is the game changer for the identity of this community. If we want to be Badriyin, Badriyin is a category of people. It's a specific category of the elect. That's why some of the ulama of Ishara, they say that Ahlu Badr are muluk wa asyad al-awliya. That the people of Badr, those who witness man shahidu Badr, they are the masters of the awliya of Allah, of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they have an elect station. That's why we recite their names. That's why we reflect upon them. Because we want to be like them. What were these, what these ayat that I'm referring to, and I'm referencing, these are the qualities of these believers. Those who, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in, 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 <coughs> in Surah Ali Imran, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ That the, the day when people said, fear your enemy, you know, they have gathered, they have amassed a great army against you. And they replied, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah is sufficient for them. And He is the best of protectors. That is, that is the anthem, you know, of, of these awliya of Allah. These, you know, friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These badriyin. When, 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 when everyone was telling you, hey, be afraid, be intimidated, be scared, you know, cower into a corner. Because there's threats and there are bullies and there are people who are going to threaten your income, threaten your welfare, threaten your life. All that did was increase them in faith. All of your false and empty and vacuous threats that you thrust my way, all it does is it increases me in faith. Because I know who possesses power, who possesses recourse. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me and He is the best of those to be relied upon. You cannot intimidate a believer. You cannot bully a believer. You cannot threaten a believer. It just doesn't register in the heart and mind of a follower and a servant of Allah Jalla fi ula and a lover of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's what the Ahlu Badr, that's what they were infused with. Qalu hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. He is, he is sufficient for us and he is the best of those to be relied upon. فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُهُ And so they returned with grace. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. They returned with grace from Allah. وَفَضْلٍ you know, بِنِعْمَةِ مِنَ اللَّهِ Blessings and grace from their Lord لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوء No harm had befallen them وَاتَّبَعُوا رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ And they pursued Allah's pleasure وَاللَّهُ ذُو فَضْلٍ عَظِيمٍ And Allah, His favor is great indeed And that, brothers and sisters, you know, must be our spirit نَتَّبِعْ رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ We must pursue the pleasure of Allah That's what this whole existence is about the Battle of Badr represents the greatest representation of a group of believers at the helm Al Habib Sallallahu who were purely in the purest representation of it, seeking the pleasure of Allah. Because they knew that all fadl, all bountifulness, and all favor belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now who am I turning to? What what is the calculus of the person of Badr? What was their calculus? What was their hisabat? And then we have to think about what our calculus is. What's the calculations that we make in our decisions, in our thought processes, in our readiness and willingness to sacrifice our comforts, our belongings, our time, our energy, our money? Is it going to be for the sake of Allah, knowing that all favor belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are we going to be stuck in the rut of the material realm and concerned about, you know, my my stuff and my belongings, my little nest egg, you know, <laughs> my job, my things. And then and is that the epitome of our concern? Because I believe, brothers and sisters, what we have ayat, we have signs like Badr. We realize when you sincerely turn the fullness of yourself, body, mind, soul, spirit, belongings, everything, you turn to Allah and you say, Ah Rabbi, I am yours. I am yours. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he does in return is magnificent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gazes upon 
those categories of servants. He gazes upon them. And he says, <laughs> You know, do what you may will, for I have forgiven you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us these sacred stations. May we revere the people of Badr. May we love them. May we honor them. May we want to. May we really, truly yearn to be in their presence on the Day of Judgment in the Akhirah. Ya Rabbi, Wallahi, I pray, Ya Rabbi, that you bear witness and testify to the fact that we, as a group of believers, tonight, on this platform of Celebrate Mercy, alongside all of these teachers and all of these uh, administrators and all of these attendees and all of these viewers, Ya Rabbi, we are a community that acknowledge and revere the people of Badr. And at the helm, our beloved messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are not neglectful nor forgetful. We care, we honor, we celebrate, we remember, and we seek to emulate. Ya Rabbi, accept from us. Wa sallillahumma wa sallim ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Yasser. Thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to show you something. Uh, Sheikh Yasser, do you, the, the, the verse, the first verse that we read in the Quran about Badr, yeah. I realized this last year, but um, do you know the number of it? 123. Um, Which one? Me... No, uh, uh, which yeah, one? Which one? No, I don't know the exact ayah. Yeah, the, the number, I just discovered this last year as we were, you know, had the recitation. Um, take a look at this real quick. It is 313. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanallah. You know, I'll tell you something. These numbers, especially the number 313, when it comes to Badr, there are asrar. Many asrar. And that's why you have a number of awrad, of dhikr, that the, 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 the teachers will bring it back to 313. Recite this 313 times for many reasons. Um, but the the munasabat al raqamiya what are in, in, in the ulum al Quran, like the um, the consequences where you'll find that the, the numbers align, these are from the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that have to be deeply appreciated and never overlooked. Subhanallah. You know, why is it that Badr and the Shuhada of Badr happen in the same window of time? You know, the number of people who, who were martyred in Badr and then the time of Badr, which is the middle of the month. Those are synonymous in their in their they overlap. Mm. Like I mentioned, I mentioned three thirteen and all of the the, the messengers. The time of the full moon, yeah. They came, the full moon, exactly. And so, Subhanallah, you know, there, there's much more to be said about that. Allahu Akbar. But uh, I I never actually uh, paid attention to this point. May Allah bless you for for bringing my attention to it. May Allah bless you. Alhamdulillah. 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 Jazakumullah khair. Yeah, I was going to mention also that like as we were, I didn't know this. I just I, and I didn't ask him to join us tonight, but. We were joined by, you know, as you know, many people are entering Islam these days, including uh -huh. our, our brother, Sean King. <laughs> uh, he posted, uh, so so grateful for this program. Wife and Mashallah. I are learning so much. These are stories we've never heard before. Mashallah. <laughs> May Allah bless him and, and increase him, Ya Rab, and, and make his Islam and his wife's Islam a beautiful Islam. Ameen. Ameen. A beautiful Ameen. Islam, Ya Rab. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you. Inshallah. Wa alaikum assalam. So yeah, that, that was uh, that was beautiful. We're we're about to go into the um, you know actually uh, I was invited to an iftar yesterday, uh, and I and I and actually Sean King was there, um, mashallah, with his uh, beautiful family. But I did not tell him about this program today. I'm actually not sure where he heard about it from, but uh, it's it's beautiful to see Muslims and new Muslims and maybe those who are considering Islam or not Muslim, friends of other faiths joining us uh, for this historic uh, night, uh, talking about this historic occasion, mashallah. And I just wanted to show one more time, some more people are posting about this program. They've been posting about it, sending us their pictures um, as they're watching. We have so many people who have been donating. Uh, Sister Kimberly said, enjoying this so much during Ramadan. May Allah reward all these efforts to share the stories of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and these are just a glimpse of what you all are posting on social media right now. Um, tagging Celebrate Mercy, using the hashtag, mashallah, amazing. And I, I'm also happy to report that we've passed the halfway mark. I think we are very close to hitting $11,000 raised. And I know many of you will be watching the recording later. So if you're watching the video of this and the recording, 
still donate because you could still help us unlock this matching grant, inshallah, because the 17th of Ramadan is just beginning tonight. And some people started Ramadan a day later. So you can still help us and it will help towards our overall Ramadan goal, inshallah. Help us unlock this, this, uh, this matching grant tonight to help us raise the money we need so we can continue these programs and grow this organization throughout the year and bring you more webinars, conferences, trips, publications, videos about the Prophet Muhammad and his character and his companions. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So we are now going to go to a really special part of this program. It's actually my favorite part of the program where, inshallah, we will hear the names of the heroes of Badr, the heroes of Badr, the 313. Uh, and inshallah, we will be reintroducing Qari Sinan Hafiz for this part. Um, who was the reciter of the Quran that we had at the beginning of the program? He recites on many of our programs, inshallah. And you know, the scholars say that even even saying the names, even reciting the names, or saying the names of pious individuals, <clears throat> of people that God loves, will bring raindrops of mercy on your gathering, right? So Allah. God will shower your gatherings and your homes with mercy and blessings just by saying the names of those who are beloved to God, like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the Prophets and the Companions, and those heroes of Badr as well, inshallah. As we hear their names, we pray for them. I urge you to turn your speaker on, let it infiltrate your home, the names of these special beloved individuals to Allah who were willing to make the ultimate sacrifice uh, against their enemies who had taken their property, who were trying to kill them for their faith. And they defended the prophet, peace be upon him. They defended the community. They defended the survival of this religion. Uh, and where would we be today if the battle of Badr had went the other way? So I urge you all to turn this loud, inshallah, so that the names of our heroes of Badr can permeate your walls, your ears, your body, and bring blessings to everyone around you, inshallah, through uh, their blessed memory, inshallah. So with that, uh, let me reintroduce Sinan Hafiz, inshallah, and we will hear a beautiful recitation of their names and everyone can follow along and say ameen as we pray for them, inshallah, and we thank them for their uh, service to us, inshallah. So, Qari Sinan Hafiz was born and raised in the UAE. He has loved reciting the Quran since he was four years old. He has a master's in business administration, and he enjoys reciting the Quran and spreading its recitation and praying for hearts to soften through the words of Allah. So, uh, without any further delay, let's close out the program with this beautiful recitation that we've now been doing for Alhamdulillah for the past four years. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa iyaakum inshallah. Wa iyaakum barakallah fikum inshallah. We'll start with this special segment of this program, bi'ithnillah, as we are honoring the martyrs of Badr. Of Badr. Uh, it's, it's a moment actually as we remember them, pray for them, is uh, is actually to take this opportunity to to embrace uh, uh, their inspiration and their legacy to steadfast and firm uh, of adversity and uh, and uh, and uphold the values of justice and righteousness, uh, uh, especially for for this current time that we're living. Jazakumullahu khaira. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin al-Nabi al-Ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim 
اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا أبي بن كعب الأخنس بن خبيب الأرقم بن أبي الأرقم أسعد بن يزيد أنس بن معاذ أنسة مولى النبي محمد أنيس بن قتادة أو سبن ثابت أو سبن خولي أو سبن الصامت يا سبن أوس يا سبن البكير بجير بن أبي بجير بحاث بن ثعلبة بسبسة بن عمر بشر بن البراء بشير بن سعد بلال بن رباح تميم بن يعار تميم مولى غنم بن السلم اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء ثقف بن عمرو جابر بن خالد جابر بن عبد الله جابر بن ص... جبار بن صخر جبر بن عتيك جبير بن اياس الحارث بن انس بن مالك الحارث بن اوس بن رافع الحارث بن اوس بن معاذ الحارث بن حاطب اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا يسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا تميم مولى خراش ثابت بن أقرم ثابت بن ثعلبة ثابت بن خالد ثابت بن خنساء ثابت بن عمر ثابت بن هزال ثعلبة بن حاطب ثعلبة بن عمر ثعلبة بن عنمة الحارث بن خزمة الخزرجي الحارث بن خزمة الأوسي الحارث بن أبي خزمة الحارث بن الصمة الحارث بن عرفجة الحارث بن قيس الأوسي الحارث بن قيس الخزرجي الحارث بن النعمان حارثة بن سراقة حارثة بن النعمان حاطب بن أبي بلتعة حاطب بن عمرو الحباب بن المنذر حبيب بن الأسود حريث بن زيد الحصين بن الحارث حمزة بن الحمير حمزة بن عبد المطلب خارجة بن الحمير خارجة بن زيد اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما 
اللهم ارضى عنا سيادنا خالد بن البكير خالد بن قيس خباب بن الأرت خباب مولى عتبة خبيب بن إساف خبيب بن عدي خداش بن قتادة خراش بن الصمة خريم بن فاتك خلاد بن رافع خلاد بن سويد خلاد بن عمر خلاد بن قيس خليد بن قيس خليفة بن عدي خنيس بن حذافة خوات بن جبير خولي بن أبي خولي ذكوان بن عبد قيس ذكوان بن سعد اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم ارض عن أسياء اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا ذو الشمالين بن عمرو راشد بن المعلى رافع بن الحارث رافع بن المعلى رافع بن عن جده رافع بن مالك رافع بن يزيد ربعي بن رافع الربيع بن إياس ربيعة بن كلثم رخيلة بن ثعلبة رفاعة بن الحارث رفاعة بن رافع رفاعة بن عبد المنذر رفاعة بن عمرو خزياد بن السكن زياد بن السكن زياد بن عمرو زياد بن لبيد زياد بن أسلم زياد بن حارثة زيد بن الخطاب زيد بن المزين زيد بن المزين زيد بن المعلى زيد بن وديع سالم بن عمير سالم مولى أبي حذيفة السائب بن عثمان بن مظعون سبرة بن فاتك سبيع بن قيس سراقة بن عمرو سراقة بن كعب سعد بن خولة سعد بن خثيمة سعد بن الربيع سعد بن زيد سعد بن سعد سعيد بن سهيل سعد بن عبادة سعد بن عبيد سعد بن عثمان صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا سعد بن معاذ سعد مولى حاطب سفيان بن بش سلمة بن أسلم سلمة بن ثابت سلمة بن سلامة سليط بن قيس سليم بن الحارث سليم بن عمرو سليم بن قيس
سليم بن مليحان سماك بن سعد سماك بن سعد سنان بن صيف سنان بن أبي سنان سهل بن حنيف سهل بن رافع سهل بن عتيك سهل بن قيس سهيل بن رافع سهيل بن وهب سواد بن رزن سواد بن غزية سويبط بن حرملة شجاع بن وهب شريك بن أنيس شماس بن عثمان صبيح مولى العاصي صفوان بن وهب صهيب بن سنا صهيب بن سنان صيف صيفي بن سواد الضحاك بن حارثة الضحاك بن عمر ضم ضمرة بن عمر الطفيل بن الحارث الطفيل بن مالك الطفيل بن نعمان طليب بن عمر طلحة بن عبيد الله عاصم بن ثابت عاصم بن عدي اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن سيادنا عاصم بن البكير عاصم بن قيس عاقل بن البكير عامر بن أمية عامر بن البكير عامر بن ربيع عامر بن سعد عامر بن سلمة عامر بن فهيرة عامر بن مخلد عائد بن ماعص عباد بن بشر عباد بن الخشخش عباد بن قيس عباد بن قيس بن عامر عباد بن قيس بن عائشة عبادة بن الصامت عبد الله بن ثعلبة عبد الله بن جبير عبد الله بن جحش عبد الله بن الجد عبد الله بن الحمير عبد الله بن الربيع عبد الله بن رواحة عبد الله بن زيد عبد الله بن سراقة عبد الله بن سلمة عبد الله بن سهل عبد الله بن سهيل عبد الله بن شريك عبد الله بن طارق عبد الله بن عامر عبد الله بن عبد الله عبد الله بن عبد 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 الله بن مناف عبد الله بن عبس عبد الله بن عرفطه عبد الله بن عمر عبد الله بن عمير عبد الله بن قيس بن خلده عبد الله بن قيس بن صخر عبد الله بن كعب صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما الله هما صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عنا سيادنا عبد الله بن مخرمة عبد الله بن مسعود عبد الله بن مضعون عبد الله بن النعمان 
عبد الرحمن بن جبر عبد رب بن حق عبس بن عامر عبيد بن أوس عبيد بن التيهان عبيد بن زيد عبيد بن أبي عبيد عبيدة بن الحارث عتبان بن مالك عتبة بن ربيع عتبة بن عبد الله عتبة بن غزوان عثمان بن مضعون العجلان بن النعمان عدي بن, غز... عدي بن أبي الزغباء عصمة بن الحصين عصيمة الأشجع عطية بن نويرة عقبة عقبة بن عامر عقبة بن عثمان عقبة بن وهب الأنصار عقبة بن وهب المهاجر عكاشة بن محصن عمار بن ياسر عمارة بن حزم عمارة بن زيد عمارة بن زياد عصيمة الأشجع عطية بن نويرة عقبة بن عامر عقبة بن عثمان عقبة بن وهب الأنصاري عكاشة بن محصن عمار بن ياسر عمارة بن حزم عمار عمارة بن زياد صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما الله هما صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عنا سيادنا عمرو بن إياس عمرو بن ثعلبة عمرو بن الجموح عمرو بن الحارث المهاجر عمرو بن الحارث الأنصاري عمرو بن سراقة عمرو بن أبي سر عمرو بن طلق عمرو بن عوف عمرو بن قيس عمرو بن معاذ عمرو بن معبد عمير بن حرام عمير بن الحمام عمير بن عامر عمير بن أبي وقاص عنترة مولى سليم عوف بن الحارث عويم بن ساعدة عياض بن زهير غنام بن أوس الفاكه بن بشر فروة بن عمر قتادة بن النعمان قدامة بن مضعون قطبة بن عامر قيس بن السكن قيس بن عمر قيس بن محصن قيس بن مخلد كعب بن جماب كعب بن زياد لبدة بن قيس مالك بن الدخشم مالك بن ربيع مالك بن رفاعة مالك بن عمر مالك بن قدامة مالك بن مسعود مالك بن نميلة صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا مالك بن أبي خولة مبشر بن عبد المنذر المجذر بن زياد المجذر بن زياد محرز بن عامر مح محرز بن نضلة مح محمد بن مسلمة مدلاج بن عمر مرارة بن الربيع مرارة بن الربيع مرثد بن أبي مرثد مصطح بن أثاثة 
مسعود بن أوس مسعود بن خلدة مسعود بن ربيعة مسعود بن زياد مسعود بن سعد مسعود بن عبد سعد مصعب بن عمير مظهر بن رافع معاذ بن جبل معاذ بن الحارث معاذ بن الصمة معاذ بن عمرو معاذ بن ماعس معبد بن عباد معبد بن قيس معتب بن عبيد معتب بن عوف معتب بن قشير معقل بن المنذر معمر بن الحارث معن بن عدي معن بن يزيد معوذ بن الحارث معوذ بن عمرو المقداد بن الأسود مليل بن وبره المنذر بن عمرو المنذر بن قدامه المنذر بن محمد مهجع بن صالح صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا النصر بن بن الحارث النعمان بن الأعرج النعمان بن سنان نعمان بن عصر نعمان بن عمر النعمان بن عبد عمر النعمان بن مالك النعمان بن أبي خزامة نعيمان بن عمر نوفل بن عبيد الله هانئ بن نيار هبيل بن وبره هلال بن أمية هلال بن المعلى واقد بن عبد الله وديعة بن عمر ورقة بن إياس وهب بن سعد يزيد بن الأخنس يزيد بن الحارث يزيد بن حرام يزيد بن رقيش يزيد بن السكن يزيد بن المنذر أبو الأسوى أبو الأسوار أبو أيوب الأنصاري أبو حبة بن ثابت أبو حبيب بن زيد أبو حذيفة بن عتبة أبو حسن الأنصاري أبو الحمراء أبو حنة بن مالك أبو خارجة أبو خزيمة أبو خلاد أبو داود أبو دجانة أبو سبرة أبو سلمة أبو سليط صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا أبو سنان أبو شيخ ابن أبي ثابت أبو صرمة أبو ضي أبو ضياح أبو طلحة أبو عبس أبو عقيل أبو قتادة أبو قب أبو قيس أبو كبشة أبو لبابة أبو مخشي أبو مغفد أبو مسعود البدري أبو مليل أبو المنذر أبو الهيثم أبو اليسر طلحة بن عبيد الله الزبير بن العوام
الشهاب عبد الرحمن بن عوف سعد بن أبي وقاص سعد بن زيد أبو عبيدة بن الجراح علي بن أبي طالب عثمان بن عفان عمر بن الخطاب أبو بكر الصديق سيدنا حبيبنا نبينا قرة أعيننا وطبيبنا وقائدنا وقدوتنا محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Jazakumullah khair. Thank you to our dear brother, Qari Sinan. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Um, what an amazing recitation. We're getting so many comments. Maybe we can share some of the comments here in the last uh, minute or so here. Um, <clears throat> yes, I. there was a comment that we made that this list that we just shared includes names that are disputed. So we know that there were about 313 uh, heroes of Badr. But there are some names where it is disputed whether it was those names or other or other individuals there. So there are some names that are where there are differences of opinion, and this list included all of the possible names, uh, inshallah. So that is why this list is longer than three thirteen because it includes names, uh, some names, a few names that may or may not have been at Badr. Inshallah, so it, it's inclusive of all the possibilities. Uh, inshallah, so we are uh, so grateful to Qari Sinan for uh, joining us and reciting that again. Uh, mashallah, and we want to encourage you all to check out his YouTube channel where he has also other beautiful recitations of the Quran as well. And in just a couple of minutes, we're going to be going to our regular nightly program called Nights of Light where we are going to hear the recitation of the 17th juz of the Qur'an. We're going to have reflections by Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, and Ustada Hosai Mujaddidi, inshallah. That is part of our regular programming uh, for, um, for Ramadan, where we are bringing you two or three programs every single day. We have programs for teenagers. We have programs for tweens ages 8 to 12. We have programs for younger children. We have Monday and Wednesday Dua series program with Sheikh Yasser Fahmi on Mondays and Wednesdays. It's a really beautiful 45-minute Dua night, and it's really popular, especially in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So all of these programs you can still sign up for. All of them are free, except for the teenager course that we have, but, but that is even free for our monthly supporters, uh, inshallah. And I wanted to update you as well some good news that we have really jumped in terms of our donations. We're, we are at about the $13,000 level, so we're getting closer. And I do think that as people hopefully watch the recording uh, over the next day or two, 
uh, because a lot of people will be, or maybe they're at Tarawih prayer right now. Maybe they couldn't catch the recording, uh, but the recording will be on our YouTube channel, inshallah, and our friends around the world can watch it. And when you're watching, it's not too late to donate because we are still quite far from our Ramadan fundraising goal. Even if we unlock that $17,000, we are still far from our Ramadan fundraising goal. So please donate generously. Please consider supporting our biggest fundraiser of the year that impacts the programs we can do around the year, inshallah. Most of our budget for our fun, for our programming is fundraised in Ramadan. So it is an important time, inshallah. Please also consider sponsoring our webinars as well, because um, that is a really great way you can help out Celebrate Mercy too. And don't forget that for our donors, we have really beautiful gifts, uh, including this new book that I'm holding here in my hand. Let me see if I can show it to you a little bit larger. Yes, this book, uh, it's coming out next month. It's a beautiful biography of the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Beautifully done. It's leather bound. You can see here, if I take the cover off, you'll see that this is a leather bound book here. And uh, I want to encourage everyone, if you donate at the $500 level on any other day, you will uh, actually get a copy of this book. But today, on the 17th day of Ramadan, if you donate 313, you will also get a copy of this book as well. So that's kind of a special for the day of uh, Badr, inshallah. So there is a 313 giving level. Please consider donating on behalf of the heroes of Badr. And when you make this donation, make a dua. Pray to God. Pray to Allah. I'm donating on behalf of myself and my family, and I'm donating on behalf of the heroes of the battle of Badr who put their lives on the line to bring us Islam today, to preserve this deen for us today, this way of life, this tradition, this religion for us today. Because where would we be today if the battle of Badr had gone the other way? SubhanAllah, we, we owe them so much uh, because we wouldn't be here in this webinar as Muslims today. Billions of Muslims today owe so much to 313 who said that we will defend you, O Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, against an army three times our size uh, that wants to annihilate this message and annihilate the Prophet and annihilate <clears throat> this Muslim community of Medina. So where would we be today if Badr had gone the other way? And don't forget... We do. You can read about our zakat eligible fund when you donate as well. So if you have zakat to donate, you can learn about our zakat eligible fund that helps zakat eligible individuals receive books like incarcerated Muslims, but also helps provide scholarships to those who cannot afford some of our conferences, our, our paid courses, our trips as well, inshallah. So you can help support that too. So encourage your friends to tune in and watch this recording, especially this week when we are commemorating this special occasion. I want to thank again the sponsors for today, this family who's made a dua, Ya Rabbi, Ya Jabbar, Ya Shafi. Mend our families and our ummah and heal us perfectly. Give us the best of this world and the hereafter. Amin. And they said our daughter was diagnosed recently with depression and anxiety, recently attempted suicide. Alhamdulillah, she feels better now. Please keep us in your dua. This was one of our family sponsors. And also Zaybun Nisa Begum, who said, I would like to make dua for my parents, grandparents on both sides, as well as immediate and extended families and community members who have raised us on the Quran and Sunnah. May Allah reward them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them for their sacrifice and keep us steadfast on Sirat al Mustaqim. Ameen. Everyone say Ameen to these beautiful du'as. Please consider sponsoring as well because we do have some open slots for sponsorships and it, it, is, it is a huge help to celebrate mercy. I hope all of you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. You've clicked like on this video. That is also a great way to help celebrate mercy, inshallah. We look forward to seeing you in our programs, uh, inshallah, for the rest of the month. We have a special program for the 27th night of Ramadan. Inshallah, we have special programs 
uh, for the last night of Ramadan or the first night of Eid, inshallah. And uh, there was one teacher, um, Mufti Abdul Wahid, I believe, from Miftah Institute. He had a delayed flight and he could not join tonight's webinar. So we apologize that one of our advertised teachers was unable to join us as a, he had a, a flight delay and could not get to the computer to join us tonight. Um, so forgive us for that. Uh, and inshallah, we look forward to seeing you in uh, future programs. Jazakumullah khair, everyone. Oh yeah, we have a raffle, don't we? We have a raffle. Yes, that's right. So is this raffle ready? Can you let us know in the in the chat if the raffle is ready, inshallah? Yes, okay. I almost forgot about that. But let's go ahead and select three winners who will win uh, some really major prizes, inshallah. So you can go ahead and spin, and let's see who wins the first one. Okay, the first winner of the prize that we will be sending you is A. Hefte. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but email us if you are selected in the raffle so we can send you what we have for you. Where is your, where is that? Mm. Let me show you. Yes. We will be sending you the two foot tall wooden sandal here that you see here. Uh, this is the gift that we will be sending you inshallah. And um, this is a $300 item that you will receive uh, and thank you to all. Let's let's spin it two more times and see who else will win the prize. Inshallah. Okay, that was someone who emailed us. Awesome. One of the someone who emailed us their photo. Okay, Zaima al al Qatani al Qatani. Mashallah, Zaima, you are one of the winners of this wooden sandal as well. And one more spin. We have the final winner for the raffle is Winey, Winey, Harry. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's probably some funny name, but you're the winner, <laughs> inshallah. So email us so we can email us your address if you were selected, inshallah, and you will be sent this item as well. And, and don't forget that the three foot tall wooden sandal, which is much larger, this one here, this one is, is one of our donor gifts as well. So when you donate on launch good, I think it's at the $2,500 level, then you will receive um, this free gift in the mail. We have some amazing gifts that I hope you all will check out when you are considering making a donation to our annual fundraiser, inshallah. So jazakumullah khair again to all of you who joined us today. We will see you and hopefully you'll jump on to the next program that is starting right now, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.